be a good man, don't be a nice guy. And what that meant in our world was, hey man, when you're confronted with something where you need to fit in and do something that's against your character and your values and beliefs, you don't need to be a nice guy. You need to be a good man, right? If something comes up, you need to stand up for something that you believe in. Be a good man. Don't be a nice guy. You know? And that's, I think it manifests itself in every single area of life. I think it's a profound thing. Be a good person, right? You, you know, rather than just a nice person. They say when you change your perspective, that's when miracles happen. So now when bad shit happen to me, I don't be like, why me? I be like, why not me? I'm built for this type of shit. Let's get it. Try, try to treadmill with no music. See how long you do that. Because you'll be in your head so much and you hear yourself breathing, you ain't gonna do it as long as you usually do it. When you can put the music on and, and just go, it takes your mind off of it. You can do the work a lot easier. The talent that you see out there on the highest level come from circumstances that were such great circumstances. I'm gonna end it on that one because that's fucking beautiful. Yeah, it is. Good deal. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another installment of Trash to Treasure with yours truly, Kyle Eastburn. And normally this is where Max Bresson would chime in, but he's edited in the background and we got our man Shane on the ones and twos over here. We got a very special episode for you today. Uh, my dumb ass double booked, but it's a beautiful disaster if there ever was one. Welcome to the show, Kyle Troyan and Nick Teal, man. Thanks for coming on, guys. Appreciate Good you having here. us. Absolutely. Excited. So, like I said, we're all going to kind of figure this out as we go. But uh, Nick, why don't you give, take the floor for a second and kind of let the people know that don't know you already out there. We're, a lot of our followers are definitely like in your circle. We're getting yeah. a lot of support from the local runner community. I love it. But we have a lot of treasure hunters that don't know who you are. Take a minute and, and let us know, man. Cool, man. Uh, well, my name's Nick Teal. I'm team dad over at Happy Humans Crew. I'm, you guys have probably heard a little bit about me when um, I was coaching Casey for his Leadville 100 run and um, been a student of... Uh, the triathlon world and endurance sports world for 20 plus years. Uh, and, um, I'm a husband and, uh, I'm originally from California, but uh, I've been living in new Smyrna for, um, about four years now. And, uh, my wife brought me out here and during, uh, the COVID era and, um, you know, we, we decided to, to come out here and get weird instead of staying in California and being stuck inside of a house. So, um, been here now for, yeah about four years and just uh enjoying that florida lifestyle so well we're happy to have you you know anybody that's coming into the state making the people better i mean i think as, as florida i love to hear it you know i mean there's a lot of people that came in from california that i would say came over here and they're like let's just change it but uh before we dive into that mr Troyan, why don't you let because like i said we're, we're heavily steeped in locals so there's going to be a lot of boys right now going you but uh for the ones that don't know you a little, little paraphrase about who you are buddy Yep, uh, my name is Kyle Troyan. I've was, um, been in City New Smyrna Beach virtually all my life, a little bit different from uh, Nick here. So, <laughs> born and raised. Um, drug of choice is surfing, anything adventure. I am a firefighter paramedic, a ocean lifeguard, and um, just been serving the community for ever since I turned 18, whether in the water or on the street. And uh, big in the fitness, big in anything adventure. Um, Flying planes, do that on occasion sometimes, and just anything that gives me a little uh, dopamine adrenaline rush. Also, a husband to my beautiful wife, and just enjoying life and taking that all thrown at me bit by bit. I love it. You know, especially, I know personally, like I said, I'm just getting to know Nick here, and I've known Kyle a long time. You both have dove deep into the world of how far can I push my body? You know, like... It's going to be a little bit of back and forth, but I'd love to hear a little bit from because like Kyle was just telling me he's doing basically the elite level com competitions for firefighters and such, and you were doing trial. What what was your original drive into that world, do you think? Man, I um, I, I grew up racing motorcycles. Uh, I was racing dirt bikes, and, um, and you know, I, I think most people think that you sit on those things and the motor does all the work, but you're going out doing 30 minutes plus two laps and hundred degree heat. And, um, your heart rates average 195 for, for, you know, 38 minutes or so. And so you kind of, you build a, a, a sort of fitness very early on. I mean, and that was when we were, you know, 14 years old, we were doing that kind of riding. What kind of motorcycles are we talking here? Dirt bikes. Okay. Yeah, motocross bikes. Got it. Um, and, uh, and then when I stopped doing that, I, uh, 
I was working at a tech company and this all came about as a bet, to be honest, triathlon. Uh, there was a guy there that, you know, um, he, he bet me a, a small Christmas bonus over, you know, who could beat each other out of five triathlons. And, <laughs> and I, and I, and I, and I took myself out, you know, cause I, I, I figured I was pretty fit and so you're oh, yeah. you know, like, let's, let's oh, go do this, you know? And then, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, <laughs> and then next, yeah. And then next thing I know I'm doing two sprints, two Olympics and a half Ironman my first year doing triathlon. And that's, that's how it all started. Oh, the addiction begins, I'm sure. <laughs> Slippery slope is what I like to say. Yeah, God. it was kind of kind of interesting. That's that's wild that you say slippery slope. It's something I haven't talked about on the podcast since the very beginning. And it's, you know, I was never, I heard this old saying that the, uh, the results you're looking for is in the work you're avoiding. I, so I found myself paying that question some respect. Um, and I found on my word basically like the the growth of physical endurance and taking care of yourself it is literally a slippery slope you know like some days it's like a flat plane some days it's a vertical face but it's it's something you always got to keep going at now can you yeah. speak to it where like what brought you into it Kyle cuz i know i mean you've always been an active guy like you said surfing and such but now you you tell me you're about to do the empire state building in full fireman's rack yeah and that's been pretty consistent every year and not only is it for like just your own personal physical and just being able to push it because I mean, everyone knows the story, nine 11, the firefighters who climbed and died mm -hmm. and they were, they didn't make it all the way top, but they damned if they weren't going to go all the way to the top. And if they were to save one person out of that building, they would have, and there was quite a bit who saved a few. Absolutely. So in memory of them and just all the service members across the universe, you know, that's what you do. And it's, it sucks. And especially <laughs> when you're carrying like 60 to 80 pounds of gear on already and just climbing, trudging up the stairs. Um, and it's, you know, not only to push yourself, but also in memory too. And again, the, in the service, it's, it's a long, it's a long time. Like I'll be, let's say I'll be 50 something years old when I'm able to uh, retire, but it is a young man's game and it's a long game. And yeah. If you're not on top of your shit all the time, then you don't want to be in a position where you're so physically out of shape that when that rescue opportunity comes up, you're not going to be able to perform, to uh, perform at the highest degree to make that rescue. And then at that point, it's about you're letting your crew down, you're letting your community down, you're letting the people who you are serving down. If you're not going to put yourself and put the work in to be able to make that rescue or whatever the situation might be, that's dire, that's life or death. That's a tremendous perspective that I never really thought of. For where, like, yeah. you know, we Nick had said that we're, you know, an endurance, like especially because as an endurance athlete, I'm sure a lot of you guys at the highest level, like you said, it's a very a solo game, right? You spend a lot of time by yourself. Yeah. 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 So to, do you find that, you know, at your level, because you've obviously taken it to a whole different level where you find motivation from the outside, you know, whatever that may be? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, like I've always said that a finish line motivates me. Um, okay. Like I would say that that's like, I, I can definitely, you know, fuck off for a lot of the year if, if I don't have something like that, because I've been doing it for so long where, um, I have my self motivation I will do my maintenance workouts and whatnot, but like, there's nothing motivates me. Like, you know, the thought of going through a finish line and, and crushing some souls. So, you know, like, uh, and, and now I think, you know, we've, I've gotten to the point now where we, I have enough of a crew that like, you never want to let them down, whether you're doing a relay or, or you're a single event, you, you kind of, you kind of want those outside pressures, you know, like I think a lot of people and a lot set their lives up now to where they set it up as if they don't want those pressures at all because they don't want to underperform or let people down or whatever. And like that works well for me. Like I like to have that. I like yeah. to have that outside pressure. I like to have a little bit of, you know, oomph in the gas tank when you get into that, you know, the box when you're out there suffering that, you know, you go, well, they're, they're waiting for you, you know, and there's so much more fun like that. Oh too. my God. When there's nothing that cheering you on. Yeah. People, there's nothing that feels like that, you know, or people freaking busting your chops about not performing oh, yeah. well and all that. And you're like, that's only just extra fuel in the tank and yeah. motivation. It fuels my fire, like, man. You know, like, all right, like, dude, I'm a freaking, I love to burn I'm a hater down. down <laughs> <the finish> line. <laughs> yeah. you know, show up on their soil and, yeah. and tear them down. You know, that's, that's cool. It's that's, so fun. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like that's the, uh, that's the healthy side of the, hero quote-unquote complex you know i did a deep dive into that because i feel i see that a lot in society yeah. where you know everybody's out to save everyone except themselves you know what i mean like oh, they're yeah. they're like oh i'm just gonna help this person but and then but you look at them you're like you're not 
even attempting to look how are you looking after the people around you if you're not looking out for yourself yeah. so i think you know there's this uh, there's this quote i have um from carl van clausewitz uh, in a book called on war the best strategy is always to be very strong first in general and then at a decisive point and the perspective i take that on is, is things like that you know the hero complex you don't want to have it like first yes first and foremost you need to be a hero for yourself but then at very decisive moments you need to okay all right you know i need to go up this building and charge into a fire and be an actual hero to another person you know to where i think a lot of people avoid their own shit by yeah, it's pretending almost, to save other people yeah it's almost like you can't you can't help somebody else unless you can kind of help yourself first like if you're falling apart and that goes with any if you're like you know a mom or dad or just you know any kind of caregiver if you're not healthy and taking care of yourself you're probably not going to be taking very well care of anybody else too yeah because i mean you know i kind of like to say it as put your mask on first if the plane's going down you got to put your mask on first because you can't save your save anyone else on the plane unless you save yourself yeah and that's i think a lot of people don't put their health first mm -hmm. and that's the same thing you know like family life it goes oh well i need to do this and i need to do that and yeah you need to make time for all those things but you have to make time for yourself otherwise everything else will suffer yes and that's that's how i've always looked at it yeah it creates that domino effect too of like you know yeah if you're just you're putting too many too many stones or whatever one box and not putting them in like another boxes and your own box is not getting full and yep. then you know it starts you know things yep. start getting a little bit out of control yep. and now i'm gonna ask you guys like the first i do have i have some questions that i that are made to like kind of fire up the person because the motto of our show here is respect their perspective you know so i have one in particular that i'm very excited to hear from both of you um what do you think is more important or can you speak to the symbiotic nature of mental and physical health like, do you find one more important, one that comes first, or do they just work in complete? Whoa. Uh, I mean, f for me, man, it, uh, it, it's, it's uh, one and the same, you know? Like, uh, since I was a kid, my mom always told me, go get your wiggles out. I don't want to deal with you until you're, you know, you got your energy out. And I'm, I've, and I'm still kind of that way. If I'm not, uh, if I don't go and, and get a bit of that, that dopamine rush every day, like, I'm really not. I, I'm not the same person and I've, I've been that way since I was very, very young. And I think that my mental health, you know, because I think it, it starts with one thing. If you don't get out the door for a run or exercise or just physical movement in general, we're as humans, we're meant to move our, our endocrine system, everything functions off of movement, you know, functions off of that morning light, the beginning of it. And if you don't get there and you don't do that, everything else is going to suffer throughout the day, especially your mental health, especially when it's compounding hour after hour after, and then it turns into days and days, weeks, months, you know, like, and it's, it's a, it's a, I think it's a huge issue, like just in our society in general, but I notice it, I mean, within a day, like if I don't, if I'm like, I didn't, I didn't move today. Like I at least get some stretching in and get a sauna session in and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm back. I feel yeah. so much better. You know, that's, that's how I feel. Absolutely. That's a wonderful perspective on that. Yeah. It's kind of like a dog, you know, you got those dogs just going to get the zoomies. If you don't yeah. get them outside and start yeah. running, then they'll yeah. be all like irritated and, yeah. and everything like that. If you don't get moving, but I'd, I'd like to think, like you said, one kind of falls the other in, um, your mental, I think it starts mentally. Cause you gotta go, okay. I got to go work out. Well, why are you working out? Cause it's good for you, dude. It's good for you. You're going to, you're, you're, it's only, your life's only going to get easier. You're only going to be healthy. You're only going to be better to the people around you. If you're able to get that foot out the door and just go ahead and do it, whether you don't feel hundred percent or you feel great, whatever it might be, it starts within, you just got to like, just push yourself out the door and just do it. Just get out there. No matter how you feel, do it. And then everything else, all the positive is going to follow. So I think it starts from within, spark that fire, and get the fire cooking, in other words. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's beautiful. Yep. yep. So I'm, I am curious on this one as far as Nick. What's Because uh, you said you've competed in some just wildly outrageous races. Like, what one – is there one that stands out to you as, like, it was the, the one you wanted the most, maybe took the biggest chunk where you're like, all right, I'm, it just – you know, where you took the most souls or whatever, where, <laughs> you know, that one – Man, I, I you know it's it's hard to kind of quantify like that's so cool. 
which one would be my favorite. I think I think this last one that I raced in Puerto Rico was was probably one of my favorite race wins that I've ever had just because I'm training here in Florida on for, you know, an off-road mountain bike style Xterra race which there's this no mountains one, here. This is the one Casey told us about. That you yeah. went out there and dominated these dudes, right? Yeah, I and I went down there strictly just to get my spot to Worlds, you know? Like, I, I wanted to go down there and race, and I was hoping to, like, you know, be top three in my age group. And uh, the numbers kind of were tracking well before going down there, and I was like, you know, I think I might have a chance at, like, being top five at this thing. And I came out, and I kind of... There was a lot of shit talkers the day before, you know, like, oh, you're in Puerto Rico now. Be careful. You know, all the local kids were kind of talking some shit. These are our trails and whatnot. And I and I kind of just went out and made a statement. And that was pretty cool for me because I haven't been able to do that in probably, you know, five, six years. What's the full metrics on this race? It's a mile swim, and it's oh, a yeah, brother. It's a. <laughs> it's That's a, what I'm talking about. It's some a, swimming. <laughs> yeah, it's a and it's a 21 mile mountain bike. There was the course, and what it was supposed to be a 10k, um, which is 6.2 miles, but it ended up being eight because they didn't cut the course correctly. <laughs> and like I, I mean, like I came out, I second out of the water, and and uh, and passed the guy hundred feet out of transition going on the bike and I put 12 minutes into him on the bike and came off 12 minutes that's pumped. great pumped Free yeah I mean I caught water too that must feel good separating from that it pack was, it was cool <laughs> I think the only problem was we were getting stung by jellyfish the oh, whole God. time God. what month was it uh it was in March and okay. we were like, they were just like, I had one sitting on my face at one point. I'm like, Oh my God, man. So, but, uh, it was, it was really neat. And like to go down there and get the spot was, was, it was a really cool. Yeah. That was, it was a cool thing to do. Now so. I'm curious, how, how do you train for the water stuff? Do you actually get out in the ocean and do it? Or do you have like a float and go in coastal or just do the pool deal? I or? just do the pool a lot. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I've done and like I grew up in the Monterey Bay. So like I've done enough open water swimming there in the worst kind of conditions that I'm, I'm really not great whites. Yeah. Like we <laughs> saw, there's a lot of gray jackets down there, you yeah. know, like, and I, I never really, I, I, I'm not, I'm not frightened by the water at all. So that that's like, for me, like I know how to open water swim well. And if I go and do my reps in the pool, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I can swim yeah. with, some of the best do you yeah. find that to be a big difference like open water and pool swimming i mean i guess you both could speak to this i mean you've, you've been doing lifeguard games for as long as i've known you now waves are a big big uh variable yeah because there's huge. like just doing lifeguard competitions and just seeing yeah. uh, just growing up because you have different aspects of like just like we always swim drill in the morning we swim like whatever it is 500 meters or something yeah. out to buoy back depending on the tide and all that so whoops so but you can see like once the waves start kicking those people who are really good in the pool, but maybe they've always just been in the pool, maybe not been exposed to the ocean, don't know how the ocean works and operates and how to like dive under the surf, depending on the conditions. And they might not, some will do great. Some will, you know, kick yeah. everyone's butt, but there's a few that are like, oh shit, I got to dive under all these waves. And it's not that streamlined flat water, like yeah. mm -hmm. in the surf, you're, you're diving and dodging all the white water and then the whole ocean's moving. So you got to, you know, kind of know how to play like the currents and the drifts and the waves and just so many different variables. And depending on the size, it just throws a lot at you. Some who perform well in there. And I think most of the surfers actually do pretty well because they're just always out there. So they're just exposed they and they it. know how to, yeah. yeah. Okay. Comes away, go under, kick, 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 coming back up. And then all the other pool swimmers are kind of behind you. But then on a flat day, totally different story. They're whipping everyone's ass yeah, out there. Like, yeah, it's like, right. oh, it's flat. Oh, I'm screwed. They're yeah. going to kick my ass <laughs> Yeah, out that's here. right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Is this a trip you were just on? Uh, that was in uh, November. That was uh, Puerto Escondido, Mexico. They call that the Mexican yeah, Mexico. pipeline. Right. Yeah, and believe me, that wave is just kindergarten compared to what some guys do out there. Yeah. That's like, that's like just, that's as perfect as I could ask for. Yeah. yeah that is the perfect that's wave. Awesome, dude. Yeah, no, that was, and believe me after that wave, it's, it's funny. Cause there's a few, uh, there's a few photographers that frequent there. And, uh, as soon as I caught that wave, I was like, Looking for guys with this guy. <laughs> this. I'm like, Somebody, right? the and they're happy to sell you the photo. They get it. You're like, yeah, amigo, I got you yeah, one. And I was awesome. like, oh, how much you want? Please, God, yeah, give me yeah, that yeah, photo. Yeah, right. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a great so, shot, um, man. yeah, but I mean, that place is 
that place is very very frightening when it's big it's just it's like it's nothing super that can shallow happen. too yeah. isn't it yeah so it's um god they have like an offshore trench there that's what makes the wave so big so it's mm-hmm. like thousands and thousands of feet deep like imagine like where the buoys are like at our inlet yeah like imagine it'd be like just dropping off thousands it's just thousands a shelf of feet. yeah yeah i want to go so fishing it, there yeah. Oh, yeah, that too. There's plenty of like marlin stuff that frequent and yeah. stuff right off shoreline. <laughs> but yeah, it's very scary. And that wave is nonsense compared to what some guys do over there where it's just like, phew, looks like they're 50 foot faces. They're surfing. It's it's scary. <laughs> Isn't it I, crazy? I, like, I don't get that. I don't it, understand. That. I've paddled out next to it. Luckily, where those boats are, you can see that's the bay. Uh-huh. And you can kind of paddle out with a big board and kind of sit next to it. Not get inside because yeah. you'll die. I'll die. Like, yeah. there's no, yeah, I have no business no. out there. But. <laughs> When you're out there just looking at it and you're like, oh so my God. you paddled God, out into building. the channel when it was just macking? Yeah. And when those waves break, like I've never been a part of anything like this because I'm from Florida. It's like our waves are just not great. They're yeah. not even close compared to that. But like the spray coming off of it, like the back of the wave is like another 20 foot wave itself. It like blocks out all the mountains and buildings, just the spray coming crazy, off the lip. Yeah. And it's like fogs floating around for a while. I'm like, I don't even know which way shore is. These waves are so big. I used to then go get up to spook- Mavericks when it hit. Like, yeah, oh, when yeah, I was yeah. growing up, and I'd be like, "What are these people doing? <laughs> yeah, you know, like you're, gonna you're all in insane. <laughs> yeah, like, no dumb? way. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's okay, man. Yeah, just and like, seeing guys do it, like I'm like, I'm like, like I'm. They must just be able to shut that that part. It's of your brain off to me. Yeah, I can't. I don't. I don't. It's get like, it. oh no, I'm not going to get hurt. And be like, or yeah. you just know what you're doing, just little by little. I respect the ocean so much to know that I would die. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's remarkable what some yeah. what some guys are doing. Yeah. I think a lot of it too is just commitment and exposure, just for mm-hmm. years and years and years. Mm-hmm. And they have like a lot of vests too that they wear, so they. And you got to be a little off trouble. your rocker. Oh yeah. Oh, oh absolutely. Like, yeah. I mean, but that's their version of. I mean, think I think everybody's kind of got one. Yeah. You know, some people would look at both what both of you guys do, and they'd be like, "Oh, you're insane." That I would die. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they would look at somebody who does a. a I mean, you said what, twenty six miles on a mountain bike, uh, on a proper, just, yeah, on a proper trail too. Yeah. I, I have to imagine, yeah. like, I can't imagine the mountainous regions of Puerto Rico as a <laughs> jaunt around the. Fucking- it was like a yard sale coming through the second lap of that that bike course. It was hilarious. People were just laid out everywhere. It oh was, really? Oh yeah. Like, were you able to get through it? Be- yeah. Before any of that happened, uh, so I not mean, stuck behind. I like. I was kind of traipsing through and luckily my laps were pretty consistent but i'm like i was shocked at how many people were on the ground but they just it wasn't marked well and it was like i mean literally there was rain ruts that were oh, oh god. god you could disappear a small person <laughs> into you know and then you're just like hopping over it and then missing it was wild i was i was like okay this is a little this is a little wild i like it but that plays well into my my skill set so it was cool for me you think going from growing up on a dirt bike really translates into that being able to just handle it because i i I grew up with motocross riders. I, I never was one, but they definitely explained like uh, the ability to adapt to the track was kind of everything yeah. in the world of motocross. I, I'm more comfortable on two wheels than I am walking, and and I think everyone will attest to this because like I fall down running all the time. Really? <laughs> all really? the time. Is like, it just trails, or is it just like on the road or something? I, I, like- trails, especially. Like I every time <laughs> I've ran out of door sleeper with all the guys, I fall. Like, it's just, it's like, it's guaranteed. Yeah, you must like, not be running hard enough. Like, like, I, like, no, I, I'm just, I, I'm just I'm kind of a too, too like, a conservative with my running. I'm just kind of a clumsy runner, you know, like, I, I'm like, even I, Casey and I, we went and like checked out Hope Pass and like, we went and, you know, pre jog ran it and hiked it. That was it beautiful, and, by the way. Unbelievable. I saw Casey and like, yeah. I, was, I was like, oh my God, and he's like tweaking out. Like, oh I was my like, God, that, he was losing it. Yeah, it was like, out he said, oh my God, like, and like fuck florida probably a hundred times was that like, you that i'm never going back i'm never going back. <laughs> it's, it's so nice like because you grew up in a flat swamp you're like you you're in california yeah. of course. same thing i'm a sucker for any landscape and all that yeah. so coming from florida a flat swamp then going to see like beautiful mountains out west and mountains it's like it's go, dry you know, and then like it's like in the 70s see, it's just you know. so like i fell that day uplifting I fell running down that day <laughs> he's like every time you're with me i fall i'm like i fall trail running all the time <laughs> stupid man dude the first time i saw vertical earth i stopped the car like on the highway yeah like it, st- like it came around a bend and i'm just like Arr! like because to me as a floridian you see something that yeah. big it's kind of scary did you do the was it like like the normal florida like uh pilgrimage up to like north carolina or something you finally uh, see new- those little hills you're like oh no, my god was, it's so cool <laughs> this was new hampshire oh okay, uh, okay. yeah <laughs> like i so i came around the bend we were going snowboarding and like i had seen the hills off in the distance but we went through a mountain pass 
and it's like I came around and it was just all I could see in yeah. the windows was earth on yeah. all sides of the car. I'm like, this is not normal to me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, Lord. it's, it's super. Yeah, it's it's super cool. I still every time I see like you know, been been a few places where there's like such beautiful mountain range like you know in Wyoming, Montana, yeah. and then God, luckily I was able to go to Iceland, and I'm still just like, like everywhere you look around is just so beautiful. You're like, I just this is a postcard right here. Over here's a postcard. Yeah, that's a postcard, and it's just so like yeah, it's so uplifting and. Yeah, now you like, said you were getting ready for worlds. What's what's that comparatively to the race you just did? Is it like a, a bigger uh, monster it's in, in a um, crazier place? It's in Trentino, Italy. You can look up uh, Xterra Planet. Um, now, what is Xterra Racing? It's it's off road triathlon. Uh, it's, so it's it's essentially it's the Olympic distance triathlon, um, but it's off road. So you swim, usually lake or ocean, similar you know similar to a triathlon, and then you do a mountain bike and then a trail run. Um, the general consensus is for me is that it's just an easier um it's it's not easier it's 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 a harder form of racing and i think it's it it takes a a skill a certain skill set to go do it um most people you know john from accounting can go sit on their bike trainer and get their watts up to a point and go put the time in running that they can go do a half ironman or even an ironman you know but to go and that's the that top picture is where Trentino is yeah that's where we're racing oh wow um what yeah so we'll be racing up the left side of that and it's it's, oh so that's not just a landscape like you're actually going to race on that yeah that's uh, in uh that's in italy it's in mulvano yeah okay um yeah trentino area so it's um it just it's a different kind of skill set it takes a lot of bike skill it takes a lot of run skill and you have to you have to have a lot of grit to do it and that's why I enjoy it. And like, usually the the racers that are around that that world are a little different too. You know, you you race each other, you bang bars, you talk shit, and then afterwards you cheers a beer and you know have a good time. So I can see how that could be like compelling to get into. Yeah, yeah. that's that's fun. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's a good drug of choice to uh, yeah. to choose for uh, for fun. Is yeah, is that kind of uh, camaraderie and. God, that's beautiful too. They used to have uh, for twenty plus years. The World Championships was always in Maui, um, and they moved it away from there during the COVID era. And they now are doing like uh, the World Championship stays. So they are doing two or three years at each place, and then moving on. And this was the the place this year. So nice. Yeah, um, pretty excited. So I'm gonna ask you, and Shane loves when I ask this question. You know, because we all are aspiring travelers here you know right now we're in a building phase but like you're both very well versed in the world of travel what's your favorite place and why that you've seen so far i know it's kind of hard to put a pin on one but if there's even if you had a couple like if you had to recommend to somebody like oh if if you're gonna go somewhere before you die this is where you gotta go what do you guys think man iceland go to iceland i think it's just it feels like the landscape is just multiple areas of the world kind of combined like you see pictures of New Zealand and then you're like, oh, Iceland, there looks like you're in New Zealand, some parts of Iceland. You're in the highlands of the Scotland, of uh, Scotland. Then it's like you're trying to drive it in the middle and you're like, oh, this looks like, like Montana, Wyoming a little bit. So there's a lot of things combined. Then it's its own, like you see like just awesome cliffs, just like epic waves breaking. And then there's like ice lagoons where you're seeing like glaciers and ice just floating out. And then there's like volcanoes and just like everything combined in the one island super friendly it's a direct flight out of orlando and it's just it's absolutely stunning i think it just combines it all into one Whoa. like just that little stupid island out in the north atlantic <laughs> <laughs> all right that's yeah. on, that's on our list man that's yeah. like I, my wife's been there but i have not yet um I, man it's it's hard to say like it kind of depends what you're looking to do mm-hmm. um i think you know for uh i i love eastern europe it is you know for, for you know, you can kind of go to some of those areas and, and go to three to four countries and it's, it's, it's all drivable. Um, I would say it's kind of similar to Iceland for me, where, or at least the places I've been where you, you get to see so much for it, you know, best bang for your buck and it's pretty neat. Yeah. Like, uh, I, we lived in Bulgaria for a little while and we, um, I loved it, you know, like Romania is right there and Bulgaria and Greece is, you know, a drive down in Macedonia and, and then, um, 
What was it like living in Bulgaria? That's fascinating. Man, it, I couldn't you know, tell you one fact about Bulgaria. I couldn't have told you where it was on a map. That's when, what I'm when saying. I, showed I, couldn't, up there, I can't tell you one you know, thing about it. The film yeah. industry kind of uh, it moved over to there during COVID because there was n- no rules. There's a really? there's a huge oh. studio there. That's uh, New Boy on a Films is is about three times the size of Universal Backlot. It's it's massive and uh, showed up over there and man, it was it was probably one of the coolest places I've ever lived and one of the the you think you're free in America, right? You you think you live a free life. Land of the that, free. Land of the free. Give yourself a week in Bulgaria and you'll you'll think, man, we got it all wrong. They're 20 years behind in the best kinds of way. Really? Were they a part of the Eastern Bloc of uh, they were. the Soviet Union? Yeah, they okay. were. Um, they've been EU now for, I think, 12 or 15 years. Oh, okay. Years. So they're, they're starting to work. Yeah. Their way back and I up. mean, it's a big tech hub now. Sofia is a, a city of 1.2 million people. It's massive. It's, it's, it's set right on a dormant volcano that's all national park now with tons of mountain bike trails, hiking trails, anything you would want to do. And, um, you know, families are all in the parks in the, in the summertime. I mean, no kids are on their phones. They're all out on their bikes. It's free range. I never felt safer in my entire life. Like you can walk down the street in the middle of the night and you never, you know, never have an issue. Uh, it's cheap and beautiful and pretty wild and welcoming. And I met some friends there that will be friends for the rest of my life. It was pretty neat. Dang, who'd have thunk? Uh, Bulgaria. Yeah, I said I want to know much about that either. Yeah, no. <laughs> Honestly, like I, I, geography, I, I give dang. it a, you know, like if you're, if you ever end up in that side of the world, go to Bulgaria. All and right, check yeah, it out. it's on the list. So, yeah. Now you said you went out there during COVID. Yeah. For, was it the film industry that brought yeah. you there? Yeah, yeah. So you're tied into the film industry. Uh, yeah, I was, I owned a film company in LA uh, for 10, 10 plus years and we were doing very well and then COVID hit and it kind of shut everything down. And, uh, I ended up selling that side of the business and a friend of mine was working over there. He said, come on over and that's fascinating. Ended up working over there. And I'm, I'm a German citizen as well, uh, through my dad birthright. And I was nice. able to make it over there because of my German passport. And so I have spending, yeah, eight to 12 weeks there and then coming back for, you know, six to eight weeks here and, with um Catherine living here and it was it was great i actually just learned about that uh mike salisbury another local boy his he found out that i guess i, I don't want to botch it but he called me i guess his his great grandmother or something was a, a citizen over there and because of that he was able to get dual yeah. citizenship so now he's got a i don't know if it's german or just a europe european passport yeah but i that's got to be just convenient as all come right there yeah that's something we have known nothing about like do, like two passports yeah like that's like such a wild concept yeah, like it was that cool. you could do i guess over there because it just you know everyone yeah works in is it hard to get over there regard like without it uh I, during covid it was it was oh yeah impossible impossible yeah, yeah. but i mean it, it, honestly like i got so spoiled with flying back and forth like business trips were or business flights were pennies on the dollar and i usually would have like one other person in business class with me the whole way nice. it was wild so it was <laughs> like a pretty private cool. jet almost yeah like now now you're jet. paying you know what, what i was paying for business for like you know a domestic yeah. flight yeah. in the back by the toilet so <laughs> yeah. hey man it's uh it's, and no i will say in like i've learned in my world of travel you know how they say like it's not the destination it's the journey you know it's the exact opposite when you're flying on a plane it's like it's all about the destination. Screw the journey. Just put me in the You're seat. Like, Am I and about give... to get a blood clot from sitting for so long? <laughs> like I'm getting, I gotta stand yeah, up. <laughs> I'll fly Spirit. I don't give a shit. Just get me to Central America, and I will be fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> What's yeah. that? Uh, raw dog. I just stared at the back of the yeah, seat. Just, oh my <laughs> god, man! Shit's wild. Just no, no headphones or anything. Just <laughs> that, that's that's the new thing in the triathlon community right now. Everyone's posting stupid memes about that, and it's like it's like just did three hours on the bike trainer. No head. No no AirPods. No lights. No this. I'm just like, come on, guys. <laughs> okay, so I'm not crazy. I do the stair climber at the station, no music, because I got to listen to the radio in case we get a yeah. call. So it's just chirping of the, is it us? No, I'm just still climbing. Yeah. It's It sucks without music. I <laughs> think there's so, something to be so said shitty. about it for sure, but it's like if I have my choice, I'm choosing music every time. Yeah. But like like that, the, I, po- I played that before the show because like for me now, it's it's driving. That's become my like meditation on the way mm-hmm. into work. Like I'll do a solid half hour silence of just driving on the highway all by myself, and I find it. Damn, that's the best thing for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
damn, that's that's tough. Yeah, but I, there's you know, but it's also like that's just like subjectively, that's what I can do. There's no chance in Homer's hell that I would ever be able to walk on a stair climber just in my head. Yeah, I'm getting off that stair climber. Oh, you you think nothing about the stair climber the whole time? You're like, this isn't fun. This is not fun. <laughs> yeah. oh, up we go. Yeah. Up we go. Up we go. But you know what? For swimming, like you said. There ain't no headphones and swimming. It's just focusing yeah. on your stroke and, and you're and just I, concentrating, which is good. I mean, for your own mental uh, strength is just. I agree. Yeah. I feel like so many people u- are using those like, what is it? I don't know. It's some kind of. It's like a waterproof headphone. Yeah. And it's really? Like, it, it, it's like a, it, it, it vibrates. The, oh, the, the bone. bone conducting. Yeah. The bone conductors or whatever. Yeah. And like I had a couple of athletes doing that. I'm like, stop doing that. Like your swim goes to shit. Like you, it's <laughs> interesting. Like, cause I, I, there's so much to focus on when you're swimming. Yeah, you got to <laughs> like, get it down perfectly. Like, like you rhythmically, wanna... you're saying? Like you just get between yeah. the breath. I mean, I did see that because I started doing that. Like when I got on this little journey of, all right, get in shape, I did run, gym, swim every day. Yeah. Like a little pool over That's here. That's awesome, dude. Like cool. I gave myself no breaks. It was yeah. horrible. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd, I'd do a 12-hour shift and I yeah. had to work in ice bath and that yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So I was sleeping like four hours a night. I was yeah. like, this is not conducive. This no, night. it's not. I, can, yeah. I can attest to but it. Regardless, lack like, of sleep. <laughs> yeah, you need the sleep. <laughs> I found that in swimming, I like it was it wasn't until I found a rhythm. Before it was just like a psychopath running through walls. That's what mm-hmm. I felt like. I'm just slapping the water. I'm barely moving. Yeah. So what do you find like your yourself focusing on in a good long swim? <sighs> Just the rhythm stroke, of what you're breath, doing. Stroke, breath, yeah. stroke, exactly. Yeah. You really are so hyper-focused on your yeah. stroke because you want to get the most energy out or you want to propel yourself as far as possible the with losing the, exactly, the least yeah. amount of energy. And you're just, you got to be so concentrated. And of course, if you're in open water, now you're worrying about waves. Yeah. And if you're in a mass amount of people yeah. who just are now, you're worried about getting kicked in the freaking face by the yeah. guy next to you and yeah. people clawing, scratching all over you. So yeah, yeah you got to like, head position for me is like a big a big yeah. uh a big check-in when i'm swimming is really yeah because i think uh you know like so many people you see them in the pool or even in, in the open water especially like if they're dragging their legs that's not because their legs are not buoyant it's because their head position's too far up out of the water it's pretty simple if you put yourself up at, at you like you go to a, the side of the pool and you hold on to the pool and just try to float there and you have your head up your legs are going to drop you put your head down your legs come up and you're you playing so much better so for me head position between breath is a is like a really big indicator of how i'm swimming that is fascinating yeah and it also it bring i don't know why it brought me to this but it's like i grew up riding horses with my mother and you know the the craziest lesson i ever learned with a horse is you know this old cowboy used to say where you turn your head the horse is gonna go yeah i thought it was an old wives tale Uh uh-uh. but it's it's actually like it all gets down, you know, it, it's just there's something to be said, I think, about where it all kind of starts there on the nerve stem and, and in your head. Because when you turn your head, your spine moves, your legs tweak, and, your horse, and the horse can feel that. Yeah, I mean, the horse feels your pelvic floor before you even know that you're moving it. Your pelvic floor moves before your head moves. So that's usually... Really? Yeah. Oh, like, so if I'm, like, turning my head, like, it's going to sense you're gonna a little feel, bit of it, weight? It starts from your spine, yeah. Okay. Like, everything starts from your glutes. Your what? posterior chain, yeah. I guess I mean, yeah. no. In my mind, I'm like that doesn't make any sense. But. Yeah, micro movements. That's that's like yeah, that's a big thing. I, I don't know if you guys have ever w- watched anything with uh, Eric Goodman. He's a uh, he does a series on foundation training, foundational training. I have most of my athletes do a couple mm-hmm. a simple a couple simple movements with it, and there's like a 14 minute foundation training. Anyone that's ever worked with me is probably like going fuck that thing because it literally is 14 minutes of hell and it's just stretching and some functional movements but this guy like watching some yeah you can look yeah, it look up this yeah up. foundation training uh just look, like eric, eric goodman, goodman foundation training on youtube like there's a couple um because if your athletes are thinking it's hell then like your average human would probably crumble and everyone should do it Okay. Literally everyone should do. And what is it tar- um, like what is it focused this, on? This this 12-minute foundation trained by Dr. Eric Goodman. I think this thing's like 12 or 13 years old. Um I feel like every single person that that sits in a desk every day should do this thing cuz it's uh I think this is this is uh this is one of the newer ones, but It's basically just teaching you how to move again. Like, you Properly. know, our, our entire 
society is set up to screw you up. Like, yes, no, you know, I could not agree. We with lay that. in a shit bed and then, you know, sit down to eat our food and then get up and then go sit down in a car to commute to work where you sit at a desk for six to eight hours a day. Most people, not, you know, everyone. But no, yeah, the statistics. The, and then you yeah. go and you sit in a car again to come back and then sit and eat dinner. And then you go and you sit on the couch and watch TV. You know, and what's then a, what's amazing is people who like, like are sitting at airports to go sit on a plane for like hours. I'm like, yeah. like just on my last trip, yeah. I'm like, boys, I'm standing as long as possible. Yeah. We're about yeah. to be in like, you know, a, a three plus hour flight. Yeah. I do not want to be sitting any yeah. longer than I have to yeah. on this thing. Well, I feel like when you get to finally like look at the world from outside the zeitgeist, I see it now like um, I was in construction for a decade. So, you know, we're isolated on our own little yeah. world, always on our feet. We never worried about that kind of shit. No. Um, but now that I'm in service, I'm still on my feet and I'm working. But I look, I'm literally looking at adults that look like they're in high school. They show up to work with their backpacks on. Mm -hmm. They got their nice clothes on. They go into work. They're getting yelled at by their boss. They sit at their desk. It's the same. They were literally training you. Yeah, they were training most people to just. Yeah, that's all it is. Like I'm, it's the same as when I was in school. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at right yeah. now? You're like this is a shitty pattern we've uh, found ourselves in right now. <laughs> School's a weird thing. <laughs> well, it's like I know one thing I've been doing a deep dive into is is like the actual physical ramifications of like grounding yourself to earth, taking your fucking shoes off, and and walking around. How many people do that? I guarantee you, not enough. When was the last time that you like your parents went and just like put their feet in the grass in the in the morning and saw some morning light? No, my parents are rednecks from Sam Sosa. So they do it all the time. Okay. But yeah, that's yeah. different. You know, what yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, no, but yeah. most people like I've I've heard some account that they were like, oh yeah, they they're trying to prove to people that your average American that is in a big city when they go on vacation they think it's the you know, the no work and the alcohol and the partying that's relieving the stress. No, this is the first time in a year you've taken your shoes off and touched earth. For real. Live in that concrete jungle where it's just like concrete, 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 elevator, sit, concrete, concrete, yeah. elevator, sit, type, type, type. And then, yeah, repeat that cycle. Yeah, that's yeah. what Cause that like you, seem like a I natural pattern. I love that you pattern. said rolling around on a shitty bed. You know, like you roll around on a bed that's uncomfortable, creating static yeah. electricity. Mm -hmm. You, We are conductors, mm -hmm. scientifically. Like yeah. our body is a yeah. giant conductor, and you have to release that into ground yeah. or it's going to cause fucking problems. Yeah. And like this is fascinating. I'm going to start doing this. Like These guys look healthy too. These guys, I, yeah. I listen to these guys for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the, guy, the guy on the left is Peter Park. He, um, he's behind some, some probably most, most anyone that you see in Hollywood that's fit as fuck. Yeah, this guy touches. Oh, okay. So this is the this guy, guy the dude Peter on Park. the left doing the. And yeah, he's. Are they he, just touching their fingers like this? Yeah, yeah. And he does some stuff with with knees too. Like what? Yeah, and it, and it's just it's just movements. Like this one's, this is a newer one, and it's it's more kinetic. Where the first one is really just to get down into hip flexors and stretch all the fascia. And it's really good. But I mean, like, how big of a problem do you think that particular thing is in this world? huge like, like the hips being closed out i was i was shown it uh it's unbelievable i guess America, mine are especially i they told me to start looking at the way people walk and look at their feet you know because i started focusing on it years ago um i was like, severely unhealthy then so she, <laughs> chiropractor was basically like you need to lose about 40 like i can't do anything for you right now kind of thing yeah but you can see it like people's are walking on the outside of their feet or their feet are real fanned out it's, it's wild yeah big toe activation is probably like one of the biggest things for big general activation yeah just like walk across the floor and see which toe all of your power comes from like if you can go and walk across the floor and all of your power is coming from your big toe that's where you're where the push off is coming you're in a pretty damn good spot. Most people don't walk that way. Most people walk on the outside, walk from their heels and, or, you know, walk from the mid of their foot and their big toe doesn't activate whatsoever. And like getting them to even just move their big toe up is, is a huge thing. Like I really? see it in so huh. many, yeah, like so many runners, so many, you know, just people walking. They're like, oh, I don't know. I have ankle pain. I have this, I have that. And I'm like, I'm like, go walk, go walk. Just do a couple calf raises and do and just move your big toe around a bit and see where that gets you. And then like within a week, like they are like, oh, I feel like a different human being. 
Is, do you think that's maybe because we've just been molded with shoes yeah, over time? Like we're kind of going away from our natural, let's say, 100%. caveman days of like yeah. walking and barefoot. People don't run. Running. People yeah. don't don't hike. People don't you know utilize the strength in their toe, their soleus, their calf. Like none of that yeah, stuff is activated soleus, on the daily. Dude. You know, yeah. so that's why so many people they start running. They want instant. They want instant gratification. Yeah, their soleus locks up. Their toe locks up. They get plantar fasciitis. They get all of the things because it's they go right into overuse. Fuck so. that soleus, dude. <laughs> Me and Ty Johnson. Well, Ty Johnson came on the podcast, and you know he's been getting fired up about running. We talked to Casey, mm -hmm. and now I'm talking to you. So it's going to. I guarantee you, Ty's going to call me about this. <laughs> well, he's basically called me out. He's like, "How do you feel about training for?" A marathon i'm like bro when i started this year i had never ran a mile so fucking yeah let's do it you know i ain't no bitch so we started training and then i met sturba yeah talking to him so i started i went down to the beach and i started running i now i have a 4.6 track cool from yep. sapphire around and i i was like oh i'm just gonna do it with no shoes and i still well first i warmed up on yeah. the beach right yeah on the beach oh, okay i was like wait you're from on the no no no, no beach <laughs> well like the first <laughs> like the first time i did it I went about a half mile, no shoes, and then it was the next day. I did about the same thing, and, and the middle of my calf, at one point, I was like, I think I'm going to die. Like, I think I'm going to just cut my leg off. This is unfucking real what is happening, <laughs> and it's because I was talking, especially to Sturba, you yeah. know, and then when I did the sugar, he's like, yeah, you haven't activated that muscle in a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. Just this. They call it the anti-gravity muscle, I mm -hmm. guess. Yep. I'm sure I'd do the same thing if I started running like I mean I run barefoot a little bit like you know just for like lifeguarding all that but never yeah. like I'm not I'm not running like a mile or something if I do it's there's a problem <laughs> yeah. if I'm, I'm running, running a mile down the beach something. 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 yeah that's like, an yeah. issue yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be a that's long gonna be a long talking with to, somebody yeah. on your yeah. back <laughs> yeah my goal is to get to two miles in the next month through the sugar because I do sh two miles sugar sand. Oh, mm. awesome, dude! You know that burns like it's got to burn like so much more calories. Yeah, like it's, just soft sand. It's that burning resistance. something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because he wants to do the sand spur in Jupiter. Okay, is well, it I all don't know soft what that sand? Is. It's a remote? sand spur. It's they do. It's it's a marathon. There's like you know you got the ultra people, the marathon, and then we just want we're gonna attempt a half marathon, but it's ninety three percent sugar sand. That I'm sounds like, terrible. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. come on, Ty. That sounds so Florida, though. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's, <laughs> that's kind of what we're doing. Well, you know, shout out to Robert. He's the one that recommended it. Okay. And I told Ty, and Ty's like, well, yeah. I'm like, well, fucking here we go. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, I've never done one, one before. Yeah. Let's just let's just fucking do it. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's a uh, it's a slippery slope, man. Like sounds, I said, <laughs> it's well, an obtainable goal. Like well, it's I've, definitely yeah. obtainable. It's like, I've definitely reached that point of running where like, I haven't ran in like four days. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not happy with it. Yeah. Like I'm very on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I haven't felt that, that satisfaction you get at the end oh, of yeah, it, man. Yeah. Especially there's something about, I love running on the beach because at the end of it, I get to go jump in the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it like, that is such a triumphant, that's my finish line. Yeah. That is my like, Fuck you. Yeah. You know, moment. Yeah. And it is something that's one of my favorite things. And now I haven't done like a marathon or that. I ran, I ran a half just, you know, screw around here and there just for her own personal fitness. But it's definitely one of my favorite things. You're outside, you're running, you're getting fresh air. You're in the sun, so that's got to do some good for you. And you're just getting that fresh air, getting out in nature. It's like it's all just good stuff for your own like well being. Hel getting healthier, you're mentally just, you know. Well, it's like just I've, getting benefits from that too. Just being a generally happier person, just by yeah. getting oxygenated, getting sun, getting outside. It's like you feel like a feel like oh, this what's well, like to be human. Yeah, a human. You're imagine getting that, right? Yeah, yeah. imagine cool. that. Dude. Some guys are running a thousand or ten thousand feet altitude from for a hundred miles. Yeah, and then you meet guys like Nick <laughs> and Casey and Casey's Robert. Casey's got issues, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told my, you know, like I when he crossed the finish line that day, you know, I gave him a hug and I said, I hope you you work through your demons out there because you had some going into this thing and and he uh he did man i think he he there was there was a, a kind of a, a sense of of lift you know off of his shoulders after that thing and i think he worked through some stuff for sure that's something he mentioned um i guess he got the terminology from a different like some like the most hardcore ultra runner in the world a female that's just dominating the game right now yeah uh, uh um 
uh, what's her name? DeWalters. Yeah, yeah. DeWalters. Yeah, we talked to her. She spoke about a pain cave in case she was talking. unbelievable. Talk- it doesn't make sense, man. It doesn't. No. It. Uh, I mean, well, what's kind of crazy is, though, and not to interrupt you, but like no, the, entire, no. the entire Ultra scene this year, the last two years has kind of been thrown on its head. Like, really? Everyone winning shouldn't have won. Um, DeRoach this year won Leadville, broke the record, beat everyone. No, like everyone kind of was like, yeah, he might be in the top 10. And then he took off and like, everyone's like, we're not going to go run with him. He's going to blow up. He's never ran hundred miles before. And he smashed the record. So no one could even get close to him coming off hope. Cause it was just one of those things this year at UTMB guy wins. He's a product designer at Hoka. He's not a paid ultra runner. You don't win UTMB. UTMB is the, the crown prince of, of ultra running. There's, you know, there's, this dude just showed up and won. I mean, obviously he's, he's he, ran some stuff. Yeah, obviously, he's but I mean, a and he's a bad motherfucker. But like, it, he wasn't supposed to. You yeah, know? there's guys getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to win this race, and he was just a general employee of a shoe <laughs> he's, company. He's a designer for Hoka. Like he, yeah, he's like he's a shoe engineer, and like he's <laughs> we like, gotta study this guy. Yeah, we gotta get him in a laboratory. He, like <laughs> he, like this guy, <laughs> smashed it. You God. know, like. It's Dude, I love it. The the guy who comes out from uh, right field and just freaking takes the gold. So like, cool, what? Man. Who's this yeah, guy? Yeah, like, it's really neat. Um, I feel like COVID started a lot. I mean, and it's a completely off the cuff comparison, but like, as a, like I was a competitive disc golfer for a little while, and you you're seeing it across all sports. I feel like even like surf it like it gets to a point where people just kind of chime in. Now, I again, it's I don't want to make a comparison to ultra running because that's all. It's you know, it's a whole different thing. I still don't understand it, you know, and I train people to do it and I still don't get why people would want to do it. <laughs> like I get the camaraderie and I get the, I get the experience and I get all that. And like, um, you know, I even understand the, like the conquering, you know, like Sturba said, it's, it's like overcoming this adversity. Mm-hmm. Like I yeah. get that, but like mm-hmm. I can get that on a much without yeah. doing that. Yeah. Now what's, what's the miles difference between the ultra marathon and the, like, let's say the Ironman running portion. So, so Ironman is is a marathon at the end of, okay. you know, Ironman, you do 2.4 miles swim, 112 miles on the bike, and then a marathon. Okay. And That's you know, 20... 26.2. 26, okay. Yeah. Hunt, you say how many miles on a bike? 112. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And I mean, you look at the way that... And you guys are riding rocket ships, basically. Like Casey showed me what <laughs> yeah, the TT bikes. Yeah, the TT bikes, yeah. Like, you pick them like up a, with like two fingers, you're like, oh, doesn't even look thing. like a bike, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's getting wild, like the way that... Um, this is the guy? Yeah, yeah, Boyard. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think Does he got an Instagram. Him, yeah. He, oh, um, yeah. right, I got you back referencing. I think that's smart. Yeah, I was just reading a story on it today, and like everyone was like, he wasn't supposed to be <laughs> what he, you know, like one of those things. And I don't know the speeds that all the triathlons are getting to now. It's 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 unbelievable. I mean, when I started, like pros were doing like four hours and forty five minutes for like that was a fast half Ironman, and now. The pros are 335, 337, you know, for doing 70.3. So that's a 1.2 mile swim, 56 mile bike ride, and a half marathon. And it's only going to go lower than that. There's no like, right? Yeah, I like, think, I think, probably, I think, man, it, I think you're, you're, you're kind of getting there. Like it, you're, you're at the point now where we're like reaching human peak. Human. And I think a big portion of that drop, like we've dropped 15 to 20 minutes in the last four years. And, and that's crap. all because of fueling. Okay. They, they've changed so much of the fueling up. So like it, there is only so much that the, uh, the human body can consume. And until they're able to change some of those molecules or, or change some of those things up, there's really, or just a genetic freak. Just a combination yeah. of well, like, all who's of the it, guy? I would imagine. You How long at- ago was it? I was just watching a video. It could have been very long. Again, I'm not deep in the running scene. He did like a sub two hour marathon. I Kipchoge. Think it, yeah. yeah. Was that like recent? He worked on that for two years with Nike. Okay. And I mean, the way I don't know if you saw any of this. I saw. Stuff that, I like, saw like they were like he was running next to a van in between lasers with pacing group. Like it what? was. Oh yeah. Like, oh, it they was got between some lasers? real science. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, like he had a laser fence basically, like that. Creating he was, like, like I a have, drag. I no, just like he's like I have to stay. Oh god. Oh, at this here. pace, this is my pace. Yeah. Like my pace laser. And it, <laughs> he, 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 <laughs> like, I gotta keep this line. He right couldn't run find pacers fast enough to pace him for the entire thing. So they're well, like, that's a lot of. Pr- 
That's a lot of pressure on well, the we van that, driver to, yeah. keep that, broke, <laughs> to keep that pace yeah. up. We broke that down. I think it was like, it was what, sub five minute miles yeah. Yeah, for it's, 27 it's oh my fucking God. miles. Yeah. I mean, oh you look God. at those guys, the way that they run, like they oh, run yeah. marathon. The, the marathons for them, it's hilarious because like, you know, one of their miles is like all of our, or is my fastest mile I've ever ran in my life. Yeah. And their heart rates are in the 120s. It's mm-hmm. it's basically a 22 mile warm up with four miles of what they call running. Do you I want to know, uh, yeah, know what their resting heart rate is, like in the 20s. They could probably like, pump, <laughs> they could pump fuel into a jet engine, I bet, like with their heart. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, you think that kind of goes back into like what we were talking about with the Bajau people? Where like the people from that area, like region of the world, especially like Ethiopians and, and like, because they're like arguably, again, I'm not an expert, but from what I understand, they are the best long distance runners in the world. Yeah, they're built for it. I mean, definitely. They've I think they're built it. for it. And they also, you know, they, you know, like they, that's what they do. Yes. Like it's, you know, Americans, they treat running as a hobby or they treat running as a sport that they do for college or this or that. They run to get everything they run to go and you know they run to that's the way that they that their community is built you know like bonding is running you know getting water is running getting food is running like Like that guy it was like two miles and back to school right i remember that was part of the story he's like yeah that when he was going to school he had to run two miles to get to school and run two miles back so every grandpa's got that story right you know yeah yeah. Yeah. and it was snowing (laughs) yeah except this guy's like there was lions sometimes yeah exactly right had to fight that grizzly bear every yeah. day so I could get the math class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I remember there was a guest on Joe Rogan, and he spent some time with a no, one of the one of the last nomadic tribes in in human, oh, wow. like in humanity. Yeah. There, and they move across the plains of Africa. Okay. Oh, like, okay. they never stop. And what the hunters do is they will literally run from sun up to sundown chasing baboons. Wow. Like they do not stop running. Wow. And it's it, you hear that, and you like you said, to to us it's a hobby. To them, that's just life. It's just it's what just they do. another it's what they have fucking to do. day. Yeah, it's and it's you know. I think that's innately probably in all of us. You know, as like Ooh. Americans, like we're just now we're stuck on the office and we're not exercised. Like no, that's in us somewhere. It's just we didn't start with that foundation to get us there, and just and through yeah. was time we from... just been eating like crap and not exercising and doing all the bad stuff yeah. that gets us oh, where we're at. I think it's just gluttonous levels of comfort, like too yeah. much, too many generations. I mean, you just... look at every, it, it, nothing in America is set up to, to live a healthy lifestyle, you know? That's a really good point. I <laughs> nothing mean, is. As a service... How fast can we DoorDash uh, Zaxby's here? <laughs> yeah. Pretty dang right? quick. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, as a service mechanic now, like I am having to really use my every ounce of my accountability to stay healthy because it's I'm, I'm on the move all day yeah. long if i'm not on my feet working on something yeah. i'm in a vehicle and if i you know say i say i didn't have the time to prep meals the night before well that means you're fasting all fucking day yeah or find a Publix, a chipotle yeah just today you know i had to like go out of my way to go because i'm like fuck I'm, I'm hungry i need to eat something yeah and for an hour i could not find one healthy option it's not a crazy. single one. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's wild. Like I mean just the just just the food in general here even the healthier foods. You know, uh most of it, we have, I grew up in the central California, they call it the salad bowl of America. It's most kind of funny. Most of the broccoli and lettuce and things like that come from oh, from okay. the Salinas Valley. So like I grew up with a lot of the ranchers and farmers and the kids and the people that work at those companies and like just the like the way that they certify organic in America is, is unlike anywhere in the world. Whereas, you know, a lot of these companies have their own certification companies Yes, that then certify their product organic. Oh yeah. It's yeah. all a racket. Yeah. It's <laughs> and you're joke. like, I've gotten to the, the point. Uh, the, uh, the refs and the basketball teams are working for themselves or working for the teams yeah. that, you know, one of the sides. I've gotten to the point where like, you know, right now I'm, I'm trying to do some things so I can't make the full shift, but it's like Rogan said, like I will be fully subsistence in the next two years. Like I know cattle ranchers in, in the South side of Florida where my family and I'll split that. And then outside of like, I got the cattle, I hunted the deer, yeah. I killed the fish. Yeah. Like I don't want your fucking food anymore. Mm-mm. I don't. Yeah. Cause like you said, I, even when I go to Publix, it's still not 
still crap. What it's supposed to be. That organic, yeah, that orga- organic product is in a plastic leaflet that's <laughs> yeah, and how killing you. you. Yeah, yeah like, and how are you supposed to know where it comes from? Go like, get that rotisserie like, chicken that was full of you know, hormones yeah, and shit. Like, it's not good, man, yeah. Like, I will yeah. say fucking, I don't care, raw milk kicks ass. Yeah. I got onto that shit. You guys ever tried it? I haven't gotten the raw milk yet. Dude, Keeley yeah. Farms right up the road. That shit yeah. is the tits. Just don't forget to stir it. I'm lactose yeah. intolerant. I'm, or I'm, I, I actually, I just, anytime I have any t- type of lactose whatsoever, I my ears plug up. I've been that way since. Really? Interesting. Oh, dang. Yeah. Okay. We got to get yeah. you tolerant. <laughs> I just yeah, so I get the I get the Fair Life lactose free milk and I I I drink the shit out of it. I love it. Well, that's <laughs> wild that it manifests like that for me. I do have a new food allergy. I'm not aware. I haven't been able to hone in on it mm-hmm. yet, but it manifests in like uh like it drives my face out mm-hmm. to a level of like yeah. It looks like I have uh like fucking psoriasis. psoriasis yeah, just yeah. in my beard though. Like that's the only weird. good yeah. patch of hair I have wow. left just goes to yeah. shit i'm like motherfucker yeah. human body is amazing some people will touch a peanut and go into anaphylactic shock oh, right it's like we're all just biologically just so diverse yeah. like whatever i we think the peanut thing's that. really weird because like you know it, the peanut allergies weren't an allergy that they just came out of nowhere yeah like even in europe like a lot of people don't have peanut allergies like i i i I don't interesting know. yeah i don't know what the the root cause of all that is but i would I'm say sure it has something to do with generationally loading us up with high fructose corn syrup mm, that that yeah because we've loaded you know, like we i mean or the glyphosate yeah we, <laughs> the, those foundational <laughs> things that the the food industry has been using now to fill in and like yeah it doesn't have sugar but it has like 18 ingredients you can't pronounce yeah, it's just 14 a, oils and i'm like why is that cheaper for you yeah and well, why is it cheaper? I know, isn't it yes. more ingredients? Why is it so, cheaper but, for you to take this oil and ship it to Thailand and then, you know, take the chicken and then send it back? That doesn't seem like it's a good idea. Why can I buy two two liters of Mountain Dew for a dollar oh two, but like a twelve ounce water is a dollar yeah, four bucks. Yeah. What the fuck is that? And that Dasani it's, four, yeah. you know, like twelve ounce water, <laughs> it's hose water. It's shit, yeah, like, yeah, dude. <laughs> Oh, we're so stupid. Like, they've been tricking us this whole time. No. And I, it's owned it, by the same company. Like, yeah, that's the Coca-Cola. funny thing, you know? Like, well, here's the real kicker is we talk about this on the show all the time. Like, we fucking know. Everybody knows. Like, it's no secret anymore. You know? Like, and I actually do want to ask you guys this. This is my favorite question to ask yeah. all guests. I've asked everyone who takes care of themselves. Um, I believe that most people know what to do. I think... You know, unless you have like a severe mental disorder, you know what to eat, you know to exercise. You like it's almost instinctual that we know what to do. So, what is it about modern day society that makes us ign- choose to ignore? Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you know what's right and what's wrong, what is the part of humanity that makes us ignore that? I'm going with just comfort. Just people get way too comfortable and then just taking the easy way out versus knowing what's right. Like, you know, you see all these people, who, let's say, no offense to my cigarette smokers, but you know that's going to lead to your end, but you still continue to do it, even though you really should quit because you already you already know your way off this planet and you're, it's right in your hand right now. So I think it's just a general overstated comfort. comfort. That's it. Just okay. it's, you're too comfortable and you like where you're at and it seems more of a chore to get yourself out of it and do the right thing, even though it'll be beneficial for you in the long run. In the long run. And for all your loved ones around you, just too comfortable. That's I, all. I love that. Yeah, I'm gonna piggyback on that. I think comfortability is is like one of those things that like the same reason why people don't go exercise. They don't go. They don't want to do the hard things because they've yeah. been comfortable for too long. Like there's there's no growth and comfort. There's only growth and you know pain and suffering. To be honest, like if you've you've ever met an exceptional person, like they've been through some shit you ever have a conversation with someone that's had a vanilla life it's pretty fucking vanilla you want to talk to some people you know the all the artists all of the the athletes all of the people that are exceptional have been through some shit some trauma some pain and they've been uncomfortable and so like i think that just leads to you know the whole point in life is that you got to get uncomfortable to grow and if you're not growing you're not evolving and that is the only point we're on this planet is to evolve yeah and i love so, that like, dude, I love the uh, <laughs> this saying. You know, a a diamond is just a rock that's been put under an extreme amount of pressure for a long period of time. And if it wasn't put under that pressure and all that force, it's just gonna be another rock. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, that's why I love that. I've never heard that one. I the one that stuck with me was, uh, you know, you've never seen a great blade through history that was made by just sitting in the riverbed. Yep, it was put in a fire yep. and it was beaten and folded and yep. cut and just put through absolute hell, and then they conquered nations with it. You know what I mean? Yep. God, that's, that's a, rad. We, we haven't had comfort yet, but yeah, that's that's one of those things we've been trying to dive into because I mean, as, as you've seen, like that's this is kind of our attempt at leaving something positive to this world, yeah. Because yeah, I don't think enough people do that, you know. So just passing a message along, especially like that, like fucking good job, guys. That was solid answer. It's not every day. Like I look for that moment, as you've seen. Yeah. Like it's hard to get me to shut up. Yeah. But every once in a while, I hear one. I'm like, fuck. All right, I got I got to set yeah. back in that one a little bit. Yeah, and luckily, I mean, you see like all the runners and like the David Goggins of the world, and now it is becoming more mainstream, which is like a positive look into the future that we're all yes. like kind of like, oh, this isn't just like, you know, a small little these people aren't gatekeepers or giving it out to like everybody and now the message of positive eating and exercising and we know that it's going to just it's just going to add to a longer, more happier life, more yeah. healthier life. For you, your family, your loved ones, your kids, everybody, and that message keeps spreading, and it's just gonna yeah. make basically kind of make the world a little bit of a better place. If we're all healthy and happy, you know what I mean? Not yeah. fighting each other all the time. I think the veil is being lifted a bit on mm -hmm. a lot of the the societal bullshit that was fed to us for so many years. I mean, you look at the the food pyramid, you look at the you need to do this, you need to do that, the cholesterols need to be this, the, you need to not eat so much of that, and you need to eat more of that, and like it's all bullshit and it was all built by you know built on corporate greed like <laughs> it's well my fear is that they're still like cuz like i feel like our like, the generations are getting older and we're starting to lift the veil cuz you know that old saying what is it uh hard times make strong men strong men make easy times easy times make weak men weak yeah. men make hard yeah. times and all that and like i i think most of the world can agree we're in the latter part of that fucking equation right now you know easy times making Hard, or easy men making hard times or weak men making hard times you, you know you see a lot of these people right that are like oh why we would go to war and we would you ever like just looked around in america as oh, a society God. we would get our asses we get murked fucking murked exactly yeah. like it'd be bad you look at you look at you know <laughs> i hate to say it but like a lot of the eastern europeans the Chinese, all of these people, they're fit as fuck, dude. And they're they young, will fuck us up. They're young boys. Unfortunately, like boxing is part of Russian school curriculum. All of South America has jujitsu as the oh, that's school great. curriculum. You know, like combat. They're teaching their young men combat. You know what we're teaching our young men? You can cut your dick off if you want to. Yep. What the it, fuck is it's, that? It's, yeah, it's uh, it's you know, and that's my fear is that yeah. Go ahead. And, sorry. Oh, you, yeah, you go ahead, Nick. Yeah, every, right, so everywhere that. you go over there, and, and, and most of the places I've been, they go, what's with the woke shit? <laughs> <laughs> like, we don't, we don't have I time for that over it. there. They go, like, we love America, but what's with the woke stuff? You know, and I'm just like. Too I, much freedom. <laughs> I've had a lot of people do this, and I'm like. Too, man, comf too I'm much like, comfort. I'm like, man, it's, it's uh, you know, I think it's it's for attention. It's gotten to the point where they're so comfortable with everything else in their life that they need to get it from somewhere. Yeah. And that's it's a, weird to me. That's a know? spectacular. Like I would definitely, I would add to that, um, a misguided, like attention on, uh, dependency, yeah. whether it's on, you've been told, you know, you have to have anti-anxiety meds. You have to have this. You have to, you need We're to so have this. You need to have this. You need to have this. You know, you have ADHD. You need to have Adderall. Go fuck yourself. No, you need to go for a run. There you go. That's that exactly out. what and I was going to say. You do not need to eat Skittles. You need to go for a run and have a salad. That's and exactly chicken. what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Like, have you even tried proper diet and exercise yet? If you don't eat sugar for a month and you have sugar, it's fucking, you're like, it's like whoa. And I'm, <laughs> it's the same with caffeine, weird. too. Yeah, it's Caffeine, weird. you're like, oh, my God, this is a drug. Like, yeah. oh, wow, oh this my is God. way more intense yeah, than it was a month I'm ago. like... Shit, yeah, it's weird, man. So like, it's, that's the next one that I want to take. I'm going to take a hit at is sugar, but that's a tough one to kick, dude. It's like, in almost every product, you know. Whether whether you you actually, you know, the problem is now. now do you is think that it's natural sugar and processed sugar as well? 
uh, so it, it, it kind of depends. Okay, like anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to take you over. No, no, no. Like I, I think it kind of totally depends on where or how, how you're, how you're consuming it. Mm -hmm. Um, like, and I think it's totally dependent on the person. That's, like that's I think, point. I think genetics and are a, a huge role into how your body processes different foods. Like you can have milk. I can't some, some people can have berries in the morning and it doesn't, you know, spike their blood sugar at all. Some people can't, um, you know, I think juicing and smoothies are probably one of the worst things that happened to America. Like really? juicing your body instead of, instead of you just taking it in and having to break it down and process and then pull those sugars out of the, the product and chewing it and allowing all of the enzymes going in from your mouth, you're now just putting that right into your gut and taking sugar, you know, right into your right into your blood taking all the fiber out of it you're taking, taking just, everything out you're doing everything exactly. that's supposed and to smoothies be out of are different just... i think smoothies are you know have their place yeah okay you know but I, I also think that 90 percent of americans aren't getting enough protein yeah i was going to ask you both about that because my uh my brother and i about six months ago we leaned into uh we're pretty much i'd put myself at like 80 to 90 percent carnivore like yep. where where do you where is your guys thoughts on that? I I mean I guess especially for for men I would say we can't speak to how it would affect a woman's body but like what is what is your diets like on a day to day basis? I would just I just try and stay away from bread mostly. Now don't don't get me wrong, dude. I can I can throw down a couple IPAs, no problem. Go to the brewery and have some fun there. But I normally try and stay away from like white bread and just like more of the processed carbohydrates. But mm -hmm. it's it's heavy on vegetables heavy on protein i'm mm -hmm. um, trying to find the best protein as possible you know like organic try and stay away from chicken and all that a lot of pescatarian type diets i, I love and that's just my you know more of what's a, fish. a pescatarian diet more Mostly like fish, fish. okay like yeah. fish right, seafood right. sort gotcha. of thing like that mediterranean, um, mediterranean, mediterranean yeah that's diet, why i should yeah. say okay. more yeah yeah so that'd be my like but i mean I still splurge every now and then. Like I don't you know, have I eat the cake every yeah. now and then. Yeah. yeah, I love a slice of cheesecake. I love a nice yeah. wine and cheese and, and like, a beer with my buddies. I love all that stuff dude, too. Going but to get a good not burger, every day, obviously. Burger and a beer every oh once in a while. Like yeah. how could you? How could you not? It's football season. That Come big on. Mike's place. <laughs> I mean, is it that good? Oh my gosh! I haven't tried it yet. That's so good. <laughs> What's that? Big, big Mike's, Mike's burgers. The burgers. Shout out. No, Mike's I know, and I hear nothing but good things. Dude, I go every once in a while. Like after a big brick workout, I just go get a burger. Perfect. And a Coke. Like that's my guilty pleasure. Yes. Like, yeah, I, but I, you're burning a Coca Cola as you're after like it. that kind of a like day. Like after a four hour workout, is there's nothing like a it. cherry Coke on ice. Yeah. That's my. That's my. It's it's del it's delicious. Yeah. Yeah, and you earned it. It's not like you're you're not yeah. doing that every day yeah. and just sitting around. No, like you're, dude. You're, I I have a you're burning. Like I have a soda once in a blue moon. You yeah. Know, that's and that's mainly around a workout so yeah. i found that you know because i really don't fuck with soda anymore mm -mm. it's been a long time I but never i never really have yeah. after a workout like after a good run you know oh i have God. gone and got a fucking cherry coke on ice is my shit like mm -hmm. I, I just i love it so much but if i'm just lazing around and try to drink a soda i'm like this is disgusting it's, it's garbage this is fucking i'm drinking syrup i drink those zebias a lot i don't know if you ever had those it's mm -hmm. like a zero sugar zero calorie like they have like cola they have like root beers and stuff it's, oh god i've never tried and that. they're they're great. Like really? it, it, it's nice because they don't give you that sugar spike either. Like you're not like, oh, I'd feel like shit afterwards. They're I'm gonna check that out. Refreshing, nice. yeah. So, what's your diet do, like on a daily day, day, day to day? Uh, I usually fast in the mornings. Like mm -hmm. if I, um, I just have a cup of black coffee. That's usually my morning time. If I'm deep in workouts right now, like I'll, I'll eat some berries or some oatmeal. Um, I really like the, um. Yeah, I really like oatmeal with some flaxseed and some a couple berries, and I'll throw like a lop of peanut butter on there if I'm if I've got a big training session. Um, if it's just a swim or something, I'll just do black coffee or a coffee or something like that, and or a, a banana. But um, I I I feel better when I'm on the carnivore diet mm -hmm. style of eating, but I I really can't do it with with the endurance stuff. You have to have a lot of carbohydrates. There's just no way around it. So makes sense. Um, a lot of lean proteins, grass fed meats, uh, you know, uh, wild caught salmons, free range chicken, eggs, um, a lot of veggies. We do a lot of grilled veggies and, um, our one, like almost staple once a week is tacos. Cause we, we, we it's get some tacos, you kick know, ass. yeah, we do some, uh, organic taco shells. We grill them up, throw some, oh man, it's just like a, 
fresh salsa. We don't throw anything. You know, it's just like. Oh, that ain't bad. That you no, gotta have no, it. No, dude. Yeah. That like, sounds freaking well, amazing. Well, once yeah. you learn, I've learned, like, once you learn how to eat Spanish food correctly, I could eat it every fucking day. Yeah. Like, I stopped eating it like From an American California. when I was I was working up in Jacksonville. <laughs> burrito, burrito was like, you know, that was a food group. <laughs> Yeah, food group. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like you know, just well, it's part just of an it. extent. Didn't California used to belong belong to Mexico at one point? Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, yeah it's just a big extension. Most of it don't, yeah. was owned by Hearst at one point too. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> what? Randolph Hearst owned like the most continuous acreage in California and Mexico. For was he like a gold or oil guy or something? Uh, media Hearst Publications. You oh, know, you know, like Wesh too. I was way yeah. off. Okay. They own yeah, I was Bush off. Too. Whoops. Yeah. I was sure. thinking like Rockefeller or something like that. I was like, oh, Hearst Rockefeller. Yeah, I mean, Carnegie. he like. I'm sure they brush shoulders. The, yeah. <laughs> they they were like the first, you know, like uh, public news or like publication to put out a a hit article on a product, and that was hemp. Oh, that's okay. That's where I know that name from. Oh, God. You should look yeah. that up sometime. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like, it's, oh, so there's it's like the brainwashing they vilif- of them. They yeah, vilified. the brainwashing. That was of the America. first like actual hit article that was like on something ran across the country on a on, on a something product. good. Yeah, because they on wanted something. to. Uh, well, hemp was it was it was paper. Just, yeah, pa- they wanted to make paper out of it. Exactly. Like, no, this taking money in my pockets paper, of this product. Building is. The products. That's one of the reasons that man's on our wall. Yeah. You know, like yeah. when oh, they, Tesla? I think yeah. it was one of the greatest hit stories that ever went out. Yeah. It's, you know, the man who funded him, the only reason he got blackballed is because the man funding him, he held all the cards. Yeah. Oh, JP okay. Morgan JP Morgan backed everything. Everything. He owned everything. But secretly he owned the rubber that was for the he owned the insulation for the copper wiring. He owned the copper he owned factories. Everything. He know he owned everything because Tesla wanted to give people Free electricity. Nope. Yeah. electricity. Not <laughs> and yeah. I don't know if I have so he had it. he made Nikola yeah. Tesla believe in him this whole time, had him stretched out in so much debt, and then he's like, Okay, bye taking your funding. Yeah. And he owned the trains, lost, he owned the auto, he owned it all. We yeah. lost the great one of the greatest minds that humans ever had. Yeah. Yeah, dang. I'd actually like to piggyback, go way back when we talked about what was it like boxing in Russia and then jujitsu yeah. and like schools South. and all that. Oh yeah, like in uh, in other other countries. I Where, know um, in well, obviously in like Brazil and South America, it's huge. It's huge yeah. jujitsu, it's yeah. part of their school curriculum. Russia, I know Asia, it's martial arts. It's it's yeah. part of their their children's school curriculum. Yeah. To do that, like you know, in our physical education, they can get out of with a fucking note. You know yeah. these kids are these kids are learning how to defend themselves in school. It it it, it speaks to that like, you know, because they're the next generation. That's what scares me. It's like yeah, our generation. You know, I'm I. How old are you? Uh, Thirty eight. Yeah, so our generation, like we were growing. I we remember what it was like to not have internet. We I think we had a pretty good foundation of rules. Yeah, you know, and I mean, all right, the house I grew up in backed up to like you know, thousands of acres. I yeah. was I was in. I was inside or I mean I like only if it was like raining or freezing outside and it was usually usually like I put on a jacket when I was I'm like yeah yeah I just didn't spend time inside I didn't want to like what why like we had rock fights and we yeah. thought it was yes. fun we threw them at cars like, too I got hit in the face <laughs> with a rock multi yeah yeah, was, I, yeah like, it was great we ran back in the kick, woods like yeah like here. kick Who's the can the was That's a why we gangster <laughs> you know like we're playing kick the can Friday night you know what I mean yeah. like come on down mom's gonna cook some you know burgers like yeah. it, Dude. you know that probably I, reflects on what we like doing today because we're like we didn't like doing staying inside we wanted to get our energy out like you're running and yeah, you know man, like I, I was you know like it, there was no but I mean I think it was a different time yes in, in a in a sense that I I think that it wasn't so much in our face that there was so much bad around us right like I think now everything is sensationalized to the point where bad people are put on a pedestal yeah in all sense and you know mm-hmm. like back then we just didn't know any better like i i would go out of my bicycle and i wouldn't come back until the sun came you know the sun was going down and you uh, street lights are home. on street lights come yeah, on you like, get home That's yeah, it was just, yeah that was kind of it you know now like i don't know if it's just that we're more aware of it or if people have just gotten shittier as a society i don't really know combination well, of both probably yeah, i mean i don't think there's yeah. anyone and i think that's like all right, like you said like the hit job on him or on Tesla or whatever. It's like now, like it used to be they could only divulge that information into your television. Mm-hmm. So back then, what? when did you watch TV? With your family in a short period of time, you know, everybody sat around yeah. watching whatever. Now, 
we're holding that yeah. in our hands yeah. all yeah. the time. The world's yeah. in our hands. Like, Larry, we could talk to somebody in, in every Antarctica hour. if we yeah. wanted to with a good yeah. connection. Yeah. Like, it's pretty wild. Well, it's like one of the craziest things I, th- I think about it all the time. You know, we've never been more connected as humans, but we've never been farther apart. I think we're the most disconnected society that I've ever, you know, yeah. like, you know, it, it. just think about how hard it is to get a group of guys together or even a group of friends together for anything now. How th- how hard is it to get somebody to answer the fucking phone? Mm. Like they will ignore your call and then text you. I will always pick up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> me too. I'm scared. I'm like, oh god, who died? Okay, yeah, I that makes you two of us. <laughs> like you can ask Max. Like I give him shit all the time. If it's won't. yeah, if it's not, I'm on I'm on the way or want to meet here. Yes. It's it's a phone call for me. Yeah, dude. My my wife is always like, why do you talk to your friends like that? And I'm like, because. Everything gets lost in translation in through text message. Yes, like I, there is so many inflections and and things that just do not get translated. There's in zero text tonality. You, you need to have a conversation, especially if you're like a little bit of a smart ass and like kind of like to, like to have you a have bit to of, be like having a little you know, bit of fun with your words. Like if you yeah. try that with text. It's not fun. <laughs> no, it yeah. sucks, dude. It's not it's nearly so... as fun. It's not fun to talk shit <laughs> yeah, through I, text. I no, love, dude. <laughs> I love the text. Okay. What, Why? what was okay is it okay or, or is it okay yeah. or is it okay like there's it's like oh god i can't i can't yeah. distinguish what yeah, you're yeah. trying to say and i don't know okay. which which emoji smile is which i'm like i'm like what does that mean what when i you? said okay i meant like okay we're all good like I promise, <laughs> that's why i'm calling you just to uh, i think the worst to me these days is you get a kid that writes a beautiful resume texts you perfectly you get him in the room and he can't fucking look you in the eye and have a conversation oh, to save god. your life or there so many times when I had to like, I'm like, did your mom write your shit for you? Because like, what the fuck is going on when I yeah, was like hiring kids in California? In I'm like, this is not, and that worries me 10x for our future gen- generation because there will be no business to business, you know, business communication anymore. The go and handshake agreement and have a coffee or a cocktail or a beer. Oh, the handshake and like, is out. It's out. COVID, uh, sorry, no more handshakes. Well, it's like, even now, like, yeah. yeah, I remember when you were a little kid, you know, and I remember my the rules your grand my grandfather taught me about shaking hands. You never shake a hand sitting down. Yep, you stand never up. shake a hand sitting down. Yeah. Always look in the eye, which that one took me a while to dial in on. Yeah, you know, because it's like, how do you look someone in the eye and make good contact? Because I got small hands. You, you watch their elbow. Elbow. I never thought about that. Yeah. I get, I just Life do hack. like a I do a quick glance on the way. Well, nowadays huh? you got to. Th- yeah. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. Well, nowadays you got to see what kind of handshakes coming. Oh, God. It's not like back in the day. Yeah. Now you got like the the bring it the in hug. or the yeah. yeah the bro yeah. hug or what yeah. like <laughs> yeah. nothing. Oh fuck yeah. me. Yeah, you have to do a few extra thoughts in your head as the handshakes about the. And we're together. white too, so like we always fuck it up. It's always a <laughs> you know like and you just end up patting their head a little bit. Put, like I'm sorry, really man. Do, man. Like, <laughs> I'm like put my palm on your face, you know, like. <laughs> But you, you hey, never Kyle. seen your black buddies <laughs> yeah. like. Oh yeah, we're Kyle. Yeah, we're Kyle. yeah. We, we yeah. Do this. <laughs> your black homies though, they're never like they never it's fuck it up. So they just smooth it out. And you gotta, you gotta snap on the end of it. when you get it dude, together, you Caucasians. Your brothers, dude. <laughs> it's funny, man. Yeah. Next yeah. time you do it to one of the brothers, do like snap afterward. They'll give you a look. They'll be like, "Oh shit." <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm Love gonna ask that. you guys a random question. Cool. Um, ooh. Never mind, I'm going to ask you this one. This one's better. What is something that others hold high in value that you do not? Yeah, I got some good questions in there. If you're ready, fire away. Title uh, at a job. I could care less. Like, Ooh, that's a good I think, one. yeah, like, I think so many people, like, base 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 their worth on on their title um and that's usually why it's the second or third question out of somebody's mouth when you meet them is what do you do for work it's so they can judge you oh and go shit. oh well i'm an i'm this or i'm a doctor or i'm an attorney and they and then they set you on whatever it is that that's then they that's them leveling the playing field or things like that but they're not a student of the world or a human being they're just an attorney or a doctor and that's their entire life. And usually they're pretty terrible outside of that. So that's, that's something that I don't really give a shit about. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I I do like that. And I guess, I guess we're in the same mindset because that also goes with, I would think a more materialism as like, 
the big house, the big car, mm. the look at me, look at me. I got all this money, but like, what's at the heart? What's at the core? Like, what do you yeah. got? Like, I mean, thanks for pulling that photo up. Like that's, that's playing out for me. That's all I want. Yeah. Like as long as I can keep the air condition on at the house in Florida, yeah. I'm pretty happy. Yeah. And as long as I don't go broke with credit card debt, doing fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's it. With being smart about, of course, financially and all that, but you know, just being happy, doing experiences, um, loving tremendously, being there for a friend and just freaking navigating this adventure of life and setting yourself up for success and, and be open-minded to everything the world has to offer you. That's, that's it. I don't need the Mercedes Benz 2024 edition <laughs> or the mega mansion. I love that. Yeah. I've been telling people, you know, cause, and I'll be the first one to tell our guests, you know, like I, I pursued that. There was a there was a time in my life where I was like, oh, you know, buy the house, get the car, do this, and then I'm I'll be then I'm happy, no. you know, then I'll be happy. No, I was just trying to convince the world I was happy without ever looking inside or take. I was I was too much of a coward to look in the mirror. Yeah, you know, and it's I'm I have less now monetarily than I ever have, and I'm more grateful. If I can wake up in the morning and go for a run in the sunrise and paddle out and get breakfast, dude, that's a win. I win. It sounds I like win a perfect day. day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I win. Yeah, I mean, like, you, I think it's very matrixy. Like, you know, you you do the high school, you go to college, you get the job, you get the house, you get the white picket fence, you get the wife, you get the kids, and then you're, you know, you spend the next 30 years living that life. So mm -hmm. then you have enough money sitting in the bank that you can live eight years to 10 years. If you're lucky. Lucky, uncomfortably. <laughs> yeah. And you can't do anything with the money because yep. you're broken from living mm -hmm. all your years that way what what's the point point? and that is if your pension holds up maybe if, yeah know, if, if blackrock or state street or vanguard does their job correctly which yeah. it, i mean we can get into the the yeah you, the we, can deep take a, state. we can take a <laughs> deep dive down that road but it's deep corporate state i'm quickly learning that rule and that's what i'm trying to focus in on now you know is, is live now yeah like the i've written I've, now i'm writing songs about it it's i'm pushing it like you know, there's a, that old saying, you know, like yesterday's history, tomorrow, yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery and today's uh, a gift. That's why they call it the present. Like mm -hmm. I, I've, I've said this now, I kind of like had this during this uh, little island retreat I did with some psychedelics a few months ago. Like I did a solo one because I had to work some shit out. Oh, good for you, man. It was it was gnarly. Um, but it like clicked at one point that like it doesn't all you're ever going to have is twenty the moment in front of your face. Like, I don't care how far ex you extrapolate. You can think about it, plan, invest, whatever you want to do. It's never going to be more than right now. It's not guaranteed. Yeah. Three foot world. Yeah. Present. That's, that's all it. you get. And Next that, breath. Mm -hmm. Get through it. it. Yep. And like, don't get me wrong. I, I'm with you. Like, I think, you know, sure. Set a little emergency fund off to the side. Cause shit happens. But yeah. outside of that, man, just live your fucking life. Yeah. And you know, if you're trying to constantly get that, nicer car and nicer house and you know let's say trying to like show off to some friends or something and those people are judging you back for what you have then guess what those probably aren't the people you want to hang around and those aren't your true friends because no. guess what yeah your true friends don't care that's how nice a, of a house as long as, have, nice as, long as you're smiling that's all they should care about yep if you're if you're genuinely happy and you're not a burden on anyone that's all that should matter Mm -hmm. literally that's it yeah and your friends want you to be happy as i yeah. want my friends to be happy i want everyone to succeed i want everyone to be happy yeah i've always you know kind of surrounded myself i i grew up in a place where there was i had a plethora of individuals kind of just across the board and like very wealthy people some very poor people a lot of artists vagabonds a little oh, bit friends. of everything and uh it's kind of interesting here you can tell him this you can tell him this. oh it's it's he's just got something that's gonna oh, yeah. chime in max <laughs> max told me something today on the, on the world of friends that's truly profound so my father told me that um uh, back in the day he uh i was going through some stuff and he goes max if you can count your friends with more than one hand you probably don't have any friends and yeah it's kind of like it kind of applied to my life in the situation that i was in at the time you know what i mean so and it made a lot of sense at the moment could you say that again? I I, mi I may miss that. Count, if you can count your friends with more than one hand, you don't have any friends. Oh, you know that's I mean? profound. Yeah. Right. It's beautiful. It's, it's, that's beautiful. Yeah. My dad would always say, say little, you know, short things like that. That would always be like... You have acquaintances. Damn. Yeah, exactly. 
That's a good job, Dad. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's a good dad right there. Only when you hit like really real rock bottom is when you truly find out. And yeah. At the time, I could count them with one hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I when I hit that rock bottom. Yeah, that's it. Solid. How's everything going? Hey, awesome, yeah. man. You guys need yeah. anything to drink? Everything good? I'm good right now. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, jump in on this? Dude, right. I know you're editing. The Opus clip thing? Oh, you found it. Bro. I told you. Insanity. Insanity. AI <laughs> using AI to uh, try and figure out how to. Uh, one, where our previous, uh, crazy stuff. one of our previous guests, yeah, who, he's wild. called AI Jesus. Okay. You know, yeah, dude. If Watch the episode that came out this yeah. week, but more importantly, watch the one that we're going to drop in a few weeks. Okay. Because this dude is... He's the Florida Russell Brand. Oh wow! Well, okay, like, cool. He was hippie. Then he went in the military. Uh-huh. Full went full badass. Then he decided to get out, study physics, and then he wanted to study AI. And now he's one of the forward thinkers of the world in AI and wow. something called AI and governance. Yeah, and he's a deep theologian who studied the pyramids with mathematicians. Nice. Wow. That's cool. Good for him. It's wild, dude. So awesome. Sky, Skynet's dope. becoming self-aware as we speak, like we in the Terminator. A, we did a deep dude. dive into dude. what into Skynet because he's trying to explain <laughs> AI to your average person. And me, me and Max are like, Terminator! <laughs> yeah, that's like, all we know. <laughs> we all know it can go south. <laughs> all right, let me reel it back quick. in here. Right. Yeah. So we're coming up on, uh, we're, we're getting there, but I got a few questions. If you could go back and give yourself a piece of advice at 21, what what would you say? Yeah, I did. I got some good ones in there. You want to go? 21-year-old Kyle. Work tirelessly and be patient and be kind. Don't be a pushover, but be kind. Work with honesty and integrity, and it'll all work out perfectly just fine. And also be healthy. Keep exercising. It's good for you. That's all. Just maintain the course. Be a good person. Don't be a pushover. But also think about others more than you think about yourself. Then usually everything else will go pretty smooth. Fuck yeah. That's, I'm going yeah. to label that the like fire, that. fireman's poem right there. That was <laughs> yeah, right. solid, yeah. dude. Yeah. I blacked out what happened. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Is that I'm an old school came, reference, I'm, dude? I'm, no, I'm glad I came out the way it did because I, yeah. I might have fumbled the ball on that one a little bit. But No, nah, dude, as a, as a writer, yeah. a poet, and a musician, that was solid, dude. Yeah. I'm going to go back and clip that for you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, I think I'll give a little context. I think uh, being around motocross and kind of that world, like we were – always told that it was a young man's game and that like, you know, a young man, you know, most of those guys were retiring at like 26 or 27 years old, had a lot of people passing away around me that were racing and passing away and things like that. So like, I think at 21, I thought that I was too old to chase a new career. I thought I had, I thought, I think I thought that I didn't have enough time because I thought that 30 years old was too old to be into being a doctor or something like that. So I think there was um, a time in my life that I wish someone could have said, Hey man, you have the rest of your life to be whatever you want to be. Just stay on whatever path you want to go. And instead of just kind of going with what I thought was next. And that was, I think it took me a while to figure that out. Hell yeah. But nice. that is spectacular Beautiful. advice. Um, this one's kind of for me. Um, I love hearing this, you know, because I know my answers. And they're a little off the cuff. Um, favorite fictional or non-fictional hero? Like somebody, you, like, you know what I mean? Like, I like I like adding both. You know, because some people have looked up to, like, you know, some people are huge Marvel heads or whatever, or musical, or, or, or maybe they yeah. have, like, a real-life fucking hero, you know, like. Who comes to mind when you think a hero? Could be anybody or any character. Oh God, that's a tough one. You want to yeah, go first? I'm still is, thinking because there's yeah, so that's many a, that's of them. a thinker. That's really tough. Um, man, as far as a hero goes, I I, I think I, I think f- fictionally the dude. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, but uh, <laughs> you know, because like the dude, <laughs> you that's know, awesome. <laughs> but. Oh. Um, uh, you know, I think if, if I was moving throughout, 
I think that there's so many heroes throughout my life. Um, man, it's hard to kind of put, put a name on one. I think, I think it's anyone right. that's kind of picked, uh, picked me up when I was down is a hero in my life. So, Fuck yeah. yeah, it's a solid answer. I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, very personal. Um, God real. I'll just go with real life. Uh, definitely my older brother, Jordan. He was born, um, with cerebral palsy, mm. um, nonverbal, non, uh, movement, quad, full quadriplegic. We had to do everything for him, feed him, change him. Um, just basically be there at every beck and need. And, uh, he passed away when I was 14, he was 18 and he just taught me so much about being grounded and being human as far as like, no need to complain about the small stuff, count all your blessings, live your life to the fullest. And when we got him to laugh, it was just contagious. Yeah. He couldn't, man, he, he couldn't itch it. He couldn't tell us if there was a scratch on his face to itch, but luckily my parents had the means to take as best care of him as anybody could. So yeah. I'm proud of my parents too, especially my mom and definitely my older brother Jordan for putting everything in perspective for me because he because he definitely just grounds you and someone you see like that even around like like if i get frustrated with anything just my own physical abilities just if i catch like a bad wave or something and i'm like oh that sucks like i bet you some people like that wish they could just paddle out or just go on a run or just yeah. give their just give their loved one a hug and tell them that i love you and that's all just my older brother yeah. jordan yeah sorry yeah oh, don't nice apologize work, for that bro yeah that was amazing uh, i that's, you know, at, at its core, one of my favorite reasons that we do this show is our guests are going to be able to go back and you're going to be able to see that forever. Um, and I hope, you know, I want I want everybody to be able to take their own advice at the end of the day. Like, don't get me wrong, I hope there's somebody out there hears a beautiful story like that or, you know, your beautiful answer. And that, and that resonates with them. Because thank you for sharing that, guys. That, yeah. was, that was deep. Y'all's, yeah. an, y'all's answers were both just real. Um, but yeah, no, that was, that was epic. Holy shit. Um, I do have, I have a couple more before we tie this thing up. I don't want to keep you here all night. Um, one of them we've asked since the very beginning of this show, it's controversial. Um, but I have a feeling both your minds working together on this one. We're going to get an interesting one. Um, now we do recognize that, you know, there are clinical levels of all things that do need help, but at a societal level, we say that uh, anxiety is pretty much nothing more than a conspiracy theory that most people have about themselves. What does that make you? Like, is that something you agree with? What does that make you think? Yeah, I think uh, I think talk therapy, working, you know, being able to sit with your own thoughts are. I, I think I think we, I so I I think anxieties in general have have definitely like. I'd never had them growing up. I'd never really, it wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely, um, I think that there's moments in time where anxiety is something that is misdiagnosed as not, (laughs) it's not, it's not anxiety. It's life. You know, like you're meant to have those feelings. You're meant to have that rumbling in your tummy. But if you, are absolutely crippled by something that is, you know, I mean, there's, I have friends that served and they have anxiety and PTSD and things like that, that I think that there are clinical reasons for that, that need to be treated. And I think that talk therapy and hallucinogenics and energy work and just general movement is probably going to do leaps and bounds more than anything in a pill form can do. Um, do I think that anxiety is a fallacy altogether? No. Do I think that we in general as a population use it as a scapegoat? Fuck. Yeah. (laughs) Couldn't agree more. That was very well put. Um, Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, I, I, I had anxiety for a little bit. Uh, I got kicked in the throat when I was swimming, almost drowned in a triathlon. Yeah, that'll in do Tahoe. it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Literally, that'll like <laughs> backstroke to a, a like fish deck, you know, or to a um, boat deck, and then for like you know five or six races after that, I had a really hard time getting in the water and trying to lead because I was like, 
what if I get kicked again going around that buoy? But then, you know, you, you just show the fuck oh, up. Is that when what, like you were going? We were turning right on a buoy, and I and the guy cut underneath the buoy and just kicked me right in the throat. Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, I couldn't breathe. And we were in yeah. Tahoe, so you're already at 6,000 feet, so it's already hard to swim up there yeah. as it is. And that one CrossFit guy just died drowning for whatever. And he, he had a medical a episode out in the water or something. Very or? good triathlete, yeah. too. Like, very, very so good. So shit can happen. Yeah. And I have something similar just to just before I go into the anxiety. Yeah, same thing in Puerto Escondido. Body surfing, not even that big of a day, yeah. but was caught between the impact zone and the shoreline. And I thought I could s- escape to shore, but that water was moving so quick outward, like a rib current, like flowed in front of me, yeah. started pulling back, and I was like, uh-oh, I fucked up. I need, to get past the, I need to get past the break. And I dive under the first wave, and of course, like a three-wave oh. set comes in, and I'm like, oh boom, my God, boom, the water's boom. all aerated, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I am, I'm fucked. Like, I got to get under this. Go under the one, come up, and you can, that anxiety, like, freaking fight or flight's coming in. And I was like, I got to get under the second one. Got under the second one, come up, like, I'm not, I might not make it through this one. Not this last set. Yeah. And then, luckily, older mature me now was like, dude, you ain't going to die here. You act like you've been here before. Mm -hmm. Get under this fucking wave and get to the other (laughs) side and get to the outside. (laughs) I know your heart rate's beating out of your throat and your lungs are burning. You got to get past this thing. (laughs) And I I finally did. And I was like, okay, let's not do that again. Let's now swim down to the the bay and let's (laughs) let's get in. But yeah, that's same shit a lot of water involved in this anxiety. But yeah, yeah, now past body surfing, I'm like, I'm like, oh, and it still kind of pops in every now and then. But yeah, I would say there is some... There's some benefit to anxiety as far as like, okay, okay, like when we're a caveman, the bush rattles. Is that a squirrel? We're getting anxious. Is it a squirrel or is it a saber tooth tiger that's going to get us? So (laughs) there's definitely some benefits to having a little bit of anxiety. They kind of go, okay, that's a survival instinct. So we see, oh, good, just a squirrel, not a, not a tiger about to, you know, come murder the whole village. Yeah. But yeah, so there is, I'm sure. Like you said, like guys who are in war, who, in, who are in some really messed up situations that are, you know, have PTSD and a lot. Like that's one thing. So that's that's real. It's hard to stomach a lot of stuff people see. Traumas and we, happen. Like, we, in, yeah. like severe yeah. traumas yeah. will change your brain. Yeah. But like you're anxious because the internet went out or something at your house. Like that's one thing. People take advantage of it is one thing. But they're also, there's like a long spectrum of are you taking advantage of it or did something really happen? Yeah. Or is there some chemical imbalances in between where you maybe do need to be medicated? That's not for me to say. That's maybe yeah. for you and the psychologist yeah. to kind of. And I, I think so. we've also gotten to a point now where, um, you know, life is so comfortable for the majority of human beings that you have to be like that energy is going to go somewhere. Yes. Right. Like if you we're meant to work, we're meant to move, we're meant to have a function in life and when life becomes comfortable to the point where you don't have that function that energy is going to go somewhere and usually i feel it if i'm sitting around and i'm not doing anything i go i start thinking about everything that i shouldn't be yes and that's usually where it stems from right like you're like oh god why why did i do that or what why didn't i do this or this you know so that's i think a a big part of our society is Mm -hmm. And good breeds good and bad breeds bad. I've learned yeah. that. You know, like yeah. for every good, just, that's why I, even when I'm having my rough days, like I have not missed a day of making my bed in a, in a year. It's a huge I thing. I won't fucking do it. Yeah. Like that is, I don't care if I'm hungover. I don't care what's happening. That is happening. Yeah. Because at least if nothing else, I, I it, com- it compounds that first good decision. Yeah. Was that the uh, General McRaven speech? Make your bed. The Navy SEAL general guy who said that. Make your bed every no, day. Or no, did you I, just come I, up with that because that's great. If no, you did. I didn't come up with it. I, <laughs> I I probably caught it on the Joe Rogan, but I know what speech yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. You know, and who knows? Maybe that was. I just I heard it a long time ago, and then on this pursuit of like you know, quit being a bitch, Kyle. Let's fix this. You know, let's get this car moving in the right direction, kind of thing. I just was like, fucking make your bed, dude. Just just make your fucking bed, and then from there. You know, that's when, you know, all right, daily prayers. All right, prayer in the, pray in the morning, pray at night. Yep. Thanks for waking me up. Thanks for giving me the day. Even if the day sucked, thanks for giving me the opportunity. It was a good day alive, though. Yeah, yeah. Thanks yeah. for giving me the opportunity to learn <laughs> yeah. something. You know, you didn't have to give me that. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah. You know, and, and it just kept stemming these good habits on top of good habits. Yeah. You know, and 
to speak to your point, Max said something. It's one of my favorite part about watching these. He said something truly profound to kind of what you guys were saying. And he said, uh, don't complicate the simple things, even if the simple thing is complicated. Yeah. Beautiful. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Like, that's perfect. Yeah. I think it, it nails the head on so many things. Yeah. Because that's what we talk about when it comes to exercise, mental anguish, whatever you're talking about. Often the simplest answer is the right one. Yeah. I, yeah. I do think, you know, everything in moderation. Like, there are things in this world where we got to give it some real thought. You know, choosing the person you're going to walk the rest of your life with or yeah. what you're going to do. Like, those require some thought. Yeah. And but it's like, great that we're able to have those thoughts. Absolutely. That's a human thought. Like, oh, now I'm, I really got to put some time and effort into whatever decision I'm about to make now. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's, but we're lucky or not, to get to do that. But whether or not you should go to the gym, whether or not you should eat something healthy, that's not one of those times. <laughs> like, like that's, that's a must. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's yeah. a, all right, let's just do it. And just, just, yeah. yeah. Like we talked about before we got in the ice bath. It's that fucking anticipation of looking at the ice bath that sucks a thousand times more than ever getting yeah. in the damn thing. I mean, all, you know, like, a, a lot of the good things are hard though you know like yeah. going for a run going getting to the gym it's a lot easier to sit your ass on the couch mm -hmm. and eat a shit meal but you know putting a little bit of love and service to you know your wife like cooking a nice dinner or anything like that is it, it's a good thing hell yeah and it makes you feel good <laughs> like at, yeah. you know like it's it's good to be in service to others and sometimes it takes a little bit more work but like also what the fuck why not yeah. What else are you doing? How does the finish line feel? Yeah. You know, like not the act of it. Yeah. Because I learned that too. It's like the, the shitty habits, they are notoriously easy to pick up. There also is no finish line, right? Like yeah. it's a perpetual state of evolution in this life. And if you're not evolving or trying to do better each day, then what are you doing? Like if you choose to <laughs> eat shitty and not work out, the end of your day, you're going to feel like ass. Oh, shit. absolutely. But Dog if shit. you exercise... Like your day's gonna be easy as fuck if you choose that shitty day. It's gonna be easy, but at the end of the day, you're gonna be, you're not gonna be happy. Yeah. But if you choose the hard thing, at the end of the day, when you get to your proverbial easier. finish line, yeah, you're like, fuck yeah, I just yeah. kicked yeah. today's ass, and the rest of your day goes smoother. Let's so say if better. you kick it, if you start yeah. do the better hard move. thing, running in the morning, doing yeah. exercising, sweating, yeah. getting all the energy out, then guess what? Anything that gets thrown at you is gonna be like nonsense. You're like, oh, this, like, that's no big deal. Nothing. Oh, the roof's collapsing. Oh, I'll deal with that. All right, rolls off your shoulders. <laughs> you don't need yeah. fucking melatonin to go to sleep. No. Yeah, I tell, exactly. I, I, yeah, yeah. Like, no, because yeah. I did what my body wanted me to do. Yeah, by eating right, working out. Yeah, and now I just sleep like getting a baby. out, getting my sunlight in first thing in the morning. So you set your circadian rhythm, and you're like, yeah. you're like oh, I'm actually tired when I get into bed. Mm -hmm. I or, tell everyone like ten minutes. Like I have some clients that it takes them a lot to get out the door. They they lack that self motivation. I say, yeah. give yourself ten minutes, and at the end of that ten minutes, if you feel like keeping going. 90% of the time you will keep going. Yeah. Or just turn your ass around and go home. It's 10 minutes. What the fuck is 10 minutes? You sit on your phone for more than 10 minutes. You can lace your shoes up and go for one mile. Oh, yeah. It's not that hard, even if it's a walk. And you'll feel good. I you feel great. And I don't know about you guys, but, like, one of my greatest skills as, like, a teenager because of my ADHD, like, I can, from, like, growing up around here the way we did, I'm sure it was a lot like this in California, I can go from bed to camping a three-day camping trip in five minutes like like if i really need to you know what i mean if you really want to do something i can have surfboards in the truck i can have a bag packed ready for the day i'm out the fucking door i just don't have that sit around in me you don't need i much like to that survive because i'm i'm the same way i'm like what's up let's do it let's let's be in motion let's yeah. make this happen i don't have time to dilly dally let's do this let's go I'm i mean the there is the a few way. things that'll keep a man in bed i feel like you know you know, company of a good woman is going to keep you in bed, for sure. That that's just ancestral. Goes back to the caveman stuff. But like, yeah. if you got shit to do, just do it. Yeah. Like, sorry, said. alarms going off. Sorry, babe, I'm leaving. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy, enjoy. I'm turning the air up so you get up. <laughs> <laughs> We're in this together. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to hit us with a cliffhanger because I this was such a spectacular conversation. I'm so excited how this turned out. And uh, I, I'm still going to cliffhanger it because this this trash to treasure thing is very much a journey. Yeah. You know, you both are doing really cool stuff. 
And I just I can't wait for the future to have you both back on and see where this journey's taking you. Yeah. Um, but we do have two questions we'd like to wrap them up with. I'm pretty sure you know what's coming. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'll ask the first one. Um, and in in this life, have you at any point been your own worst enemy? And if you have, what what tools did you use to become your own hero in that situation? So every every person's gonna go through some lows. Like life's just gonna generally, you know, throw a lot at you. There's always gonna be there's always gonna be heartache. There's always gonna be sadness. There's always gonna be, you know, non motivated parts of your life. There's gonna be adversity. There's gonna be a, a lot of negative things that life can potentially throw. At. Dare I say, even death of loved ones to the you know the worst part of it but um you can almost use that you can be your own worst enemy with that but you can also then again being your own asset and if you look back at those times that you've dug yourself out of those ruts you become wiser you become more adaptable you become stronger and i think that you have two options Either you be your own worst enemy and give in to the laziness, to the bad habits, to the heartache, to the frustration, to the failures, or you can look back and use it as tools to propel yourself into the future and navigate the life you want to live. And you can be your greatest asset. I think I think Ty said you could be your greatest hero too. Yeah. Yeah. So expect to self rescue. Nobody's exactly. coming. Exactly. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. And I and I love that. Oh yeah. And because you you only got two options. You can give in and fold and give up, or you can just look into the future because this life's an adventure. And yeah. it, can be, it can be the greatest journey of your life is caving your own way and using those, using those uh, negative things to just become wiser and more resilient. Spot on, Kyle. Very yeah, good. that was great. Um, yeah, I, I think it, it kind of goes back to a lot of what we were saying is, is – uh, do not uh, rest on the laurels of yesterday and uh, do not be lazy. Do not be comfortable. Keep on moving forward because there's times in my life that I was expecting someone to save me or help, you know, and that doesn't come. You got you to gotta show up for yourself every single day and keep moving. And if you don't, man, <laughs> you know, life's going to pass you by. And, yeah. uh, and if you don't learn from those mistakes, you're going to keep making them. And I think, I think I've learned, uh, I've learned the hard way, you know, like I've, I've made those mistakes twice. I've, I've, I've rested on on the, you know, on the fact that my expectations of people are usually higher than, than what they're willing to give. And, uh, and then when we get to that precipice of why the fuck aren't you doing this or why isn't this happening? I go, Oh, it's my expectations of that person or of that thing or of that moment or that situation. And it comes back to, well, you should have done it yourself or, you know, made sure that you learned from your mistakes that this has happened time and time again. And that's where I, that's where I land every time is, is, you know, kind of guarantee your future by looking back on your past and not basing not basing the future events on that, but at least being prepared and yeah, of, this may happen. So oh, you just dropped a nuke in my head. So that was that was a spectacular picture you just awesome. gave me. Wow, I want to draw a picture. Like it, it's it's almost like you you made me picture like you're standing on an island, right? And the island is today, and the reflection of yesterday is going to shine on tomorrow. So you can choose to see it. Yeah, or or not or, or not. That's yeah, wow. That's, that's poetic. So. Damn, I love my job. <laughs> <laughs> um, the The final question um, is something more for you know. It's it's very listener specific. Um, now that everybody's starting to get a grasp of the, what trash to treasure means, you know, and having the trash to treasure mindset, um, how important, in your opinion, is it for people out there to keep a trash to treasure mindset? I think more than anything right now in our society, the way that we are going about such a throwaway lifestyle, uh, clothes, cars, things, objects, people, 
um, that doesn't just fit the exact mold of the moment. Um, if something breaks, hardly or rarely do people try to fix it. They just move on to the next thing. Um, I grew up in a household and especially with my grandfather, he was a master engineer. He taught me how to fix everything before we tossed it out. You know, it was, no, we can fix this. It was, if something broke, you fixed it before you moved on to the next thing. And I, I think that friendships, relationships, business, everything in your life is worth trying to fix. That's my trash to treasure. Awesome. Yes. Yes. The, like I was saying before with are you and your worst enemy, the trash that you encounter in your life is going to lead you to that treasure. You dig deep enough, you sift through it, you, you get under negative circumstances, you can, you can basically use that trash to find that treasure because eventually you're going to find some. If you just keep at it, keep doing the right things, live a life with honesty and integrity, treat others well. And if you've had some trash in the past, don't do it again. Learn from it. Propel yourself into the future. Look back as an older or as a wiser, more resilient person and keep sifting through for that treasure that you're, you will find in the future if you play your cards right and you're, and you're a good person with strong integrity and you live life with honesty and in service of others. Fucking amen, boys. Dope. That was solid. Um, God. All right, so this was a solid one. Look at Shane's over here about to tear up. <laughs> um, I'll no. fall asleep. One of the yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had like two burning questions the whole time, and I was like, one, let her lose. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh uh, I, they're, uh, uh, they're stance. They're like a Nikki Lauda, uh, like thing. Yeah. For, Nikki Lauda's a badass. Yeah, man. That was, yeah. Yeah. And I guess one, honestly, kind of being a little bit more profound and was for me because I was like doing film in Bulgaria sounds amazing, but also how much you travel and surf all over the place. If there's someone who views you as your hero or is like aspiring to be just like you. What advice do you have for them? Good question. Oh, geez, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, <laughs> real, me? <laughs> um, I mean, someone's going to look at your Instagram or like see this and be like, oh, I'll be. Work, you got to work tirelessly. You got to set yourself up at least. You got to work hard and because all this costs money. So you got to work hard, work honestly. Um, be very open-minded and sometimes you do have to do stuff by yourself because if you have your mindset like on surfing a place and no one wants to go with you and you're like i want to go there you sometimes have to do some stuff by yourself as you said with running it's just you yeah like in all, all these other places like yeah it's just working hard and being disciplined is very helpful and planning your time out and working hard to financially be able to do that and luckily as a firefighter you are yeah i do have a lot of like time off and a lot of vacation i can juggle with and that was the reason i got into it so i feel very lucky that i was able to have that time to put that like, have that job that can juggle a schedule a little bit but um you just gotta you just gotta work hard and get it all out of your system before kids i guess because <laughs> once kids go along you're not gonna be able to do all that so yeah. i'll be i'm very very lucky i, I assure you but but it seems like the harder the harder you work, the luckier you do get. Just plain and simple. Hell yeah! I mean, I I think for for me, it, it's uh, you need to kind of set your life up the way that you want it, not not set it up in a way that everybody else wants it, you know, or what fits the ideal of the narrative of their their w ideal, you know. Um, for me, what works for me may not work for Kyle, and Kyle ideal does not work for me you know that's just how it kind of works and um for me like i've you know been somewhat of an entrepreneur my whole pretty much my whole life i've only worked for two other companies for in a very short amount of time and um i think what most people don't realize is that i have no days off there's no you know like i work in four time zones i <laughs> so like damn you know uh there's times where you have to take the meeting at you know, before the sun comes up or the meeting after the sun goes down and there's no such thing as a paid holiday, you know, like, um, and 
it's not all the uh, the highlight reel that you see online. You know, that's it's a lot of work. It's a it's a massive amount of work, and you got to be able to set yourself up in a way that you you know, like I I, I drive a twenty year old car. I've got a two thousand one Ford van. Amen, and, brother. You know, I and <laughs> yes. I don't I don't give a shit because. It gets me to where I want to go. I drive like six places and that's, that's the reason I'm able to do the things that I get to do is that I don't have those expenditures, you know, like we have a beautiful home. We have a beautiful life. We enjoy great meals and we get to go and do those things, you know, but we don't have kids. We have dogs, you know, we were able to kind of set our life up in that way. And you have to also find, I think, for me finding a partner that fit that lifestyle and that made that lifestyle 10x better was everything to me i never found i never had a partner in my entire life i had girlfriends i had friends you know that i dated but i never had a partner and my wife's the first person that i've ever felt a partnership with we truly do everything as a unit, we do everything to better each other's lives. And I think as far as that goes, like that's a huge part of setting your life up the way that you want it. Um, and I wish someone could have chirped in my ear much younger and told me that because man, had they was, had they said that I probably would have, you know, I probably would have went the other way. I probably would have taken an easier job and an easier lifestyle, but man, it's, it's, the amount of growth that I get out of all of the situations and all of the things that have come. And, you know, you take a phone call and next thing you know, you're going to Bulgaria. That's, that's pretty cool. That's rad. You know, that's like, super very rad, cool. dude. and you got to be able to, you know, <laughs> it's exciting. take, the, <laughs> yeah, take the leap, you know, like, yeah. cause so many people go, well, what about this? And what about that? And it's like, no man, just fucking go. You don't have tomorrow not guaranteed sounds like uh the old jocko uh, discipline equals <laughs> yeah. freedom yeah sort of thing just yeah. kind of as that's simple it, as that know? like yeah that's kind of it so yeah yeah we need to we need to have a couple's date sometimes you guys sound really cool <laughs> <laughs> let's do Look it at that. yeah trash yeah. treasure making yeah. friends let's since yeah. 2024 yeah. um we like to give all of our guests the the end of the show where the floor is yours um because at the end remember like there's going to be a, all of our listeners are going to hear you but we've we've figured out that your people are going to be the first ones to listen. Yeah. So if yeah. you want to show love to anybody that that's influential in your life or or that you haven't already kind of, uh, that's totally your call. Uh, we we just like to give you guys yeah. the floor. If there's anybody out there that's been a mentor to you, or you want to sh- you want them to know about your company or oh, yeah. anything, just just it's all you guys. Oh, man. Geez. Um, I know. I kind of. I, I like to warn you before the yeah. show. Cause yeah. <laughs> now you're gonna be like, oh shit, I'm gonna forget somebody. Yeah. No. Um, Rachel, I love you. I'm gonna be home in a little bit. And I promise <laughs> I'm gonna cook for you tonight. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little late this evening. Um, my lovely wife, love you to death. Let's do this forever, shall we? Um, oh. And uh, definitely, uh, mom, dad, brothers, friends. You know who you are. You're probably laughing at me right now. <laughs> Uh, every mentor I've had in the uh, fire department and the lifeguard service, every first responder out there, every military, just thank you because make the society work Amen. fairly well. Fairly well, I say. <laughs> We're doing the best we can. And yeah, so if anyone, I'm not hard to find if anyone wants to reach out to me for any questions, that's all. Not hard to find. I can roll. Um. Uh, yeah, my wife, Catherine, that's, uh, that's my ride and die, you know, like that's our, that's our saying is, you know, I think, I think a lot of people say ride or die and is it's, that your company. We, uh, we do happy humans, you know, okay. that's, uh, it's ride and die. Our whole crew is, is, but her and I, that's, that's us, you know, we ride and die together. That's our, that's our crew. And, um, and just the whole happy humans crew, our whole, you know, we have a, we've got a really, really cool group of people, individuals that I get to, uh, you know, call my, my, my workout family, my family, you know, that's, and, uh, anyone that's supported it and supported us. And, and, uh, if anyone ever wants to get fit or train or do absolutely anything, or just rack my brain about endurance exercise, give me a shout. Cause I love this shit, you know, like I don't, this isn't like how I make my living, but it's what I do because I love it. And I, I never want to stop. 
and uh, I want to keep building the community and, and making people healthier once choice at a time. That's it, really. So, Well, you got three more people that are going to ask you questions. I promise you that. All right, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to another installment of Trash to Treasure. As always, keep treasure hunting. Loyalty, love, and laughter, y'all. Peace. Peace.